Boa noite, jovens. Sejam bem-vindos. A André assiste documentário de The Last of Us. Que no momento está tendo sua estreia, né? Eu acho que ele... Né? Deve estar o quê? Com... 10 minutos? Ó, oh, 10 minutos de duração, pô. 10 minutos. Exato. O quadro de sempre, né? Que a gente sempre tem aqui. Se tem uma coisa que a gente tem nas lives do Jogabilidade, são quadros recorrentes. E estamos aqui pra... Continuar essa tradição, né? Onde eu assisto o documentário de Dressa Voz 2. E... Estou empolgado. Estou empolgado. O primeiro documentário Grounded é muito bom. Dito isso, não achei o documentário do God of War, o 2018, tão legal assim. E, a bem da verdade... O documentário do Psychonauts, né, o Psychodicy, talvez tenha estragado para sempre qualquer outro documentário de videogames. É, será que tem spoiler? Com certeza tem spoilers. Com certeza. Assim, não sei se de cara, mas com certeza. É... E aí a gente vai assistir essa caralha, não sei quanto que dura. Chuto que uma hora e meia. Sei. Não sei. E aí a gente vai, é, dependendo, jogar alguma coisinha antes do saideira. É, tô, tô, quem sabe já sai daqui empolgado pra, pra jogar o, o modo roguelike do 2. Essa live vai é pro YouTube? Vai dar problema no copyright? Eu imagino que, que não. Eu imagino que não, né? Isso, vou jogar o No Tetirne, Álvaro. Isso daí mesmo. É... Tudo bem, Tuzeira é, Valeu É, mas assim, só, só quando upar pro YouTube Às vezes que a gente descobre, né? Que aí a gente recebe a notificação é... Tem legenda? Boa pergunta, vamos descobrir Tem legenda em tcheco, serve? Tem legenda, olha que alegria Que beleza Que maravilha é... Então tá não quero anotações, não. Enfio no cu anotações. Tem 4K? 4K, porra. Tem sim. Caralho. É, então tá. Então vamos dar play nessa caralho aqui. Vamos ver de qual é que é. Ah, é tem... Uhum. Uhum, uhum, uhum. Eu tava pensando sobre isso, né? Eu, quando lançou, eu pensei, será que eles estão fazendo um novo ground? E já aí não falaram nada, eu pensei, porra, infelizmente não. Mas é que nem o documentário do Psychodice, por exemplo, né? Que ele cobre seis anos do desenvolvimento do Psychonauts 2. Só que aí, quando chega em 2020, aí tem tipo, o documentário acaba, assim. <risos> não tem mais documentário, tem tipo mais uns, sei lá, três episódios. Porque né, não deu pra filmar, simplesmente. O que eles têm depois de 2020 é, é filmagem de chamada de zoom, assim, não, não é tão legal. E aí, Elisa, tudo certo. Obrigado, inclusive, quem tá dando sub aqui. Né? Obrigado, obrigado, gente, obrigado. Obrigado, Michel, obrigado, Edo. Obrigado, Luiz. Obrigado, Rafael, Douglas... Os bardes, obrigado. Olha, tem um quadro do Parapa ali no fundo, não sei se vocês conseguem ver. Ok. A legenda deve estar pequena, uh... né? Vamos tentar aumentar um pouco a legenda. Como que faz? Legendas. Opções. Tamanho da fonte. É melhor. Uh, thank you all for what is about to be a very long presentation. Oh, new skin. Uh, Antigo so Testamento. Anthony and I ran some numbers, and to our best guess, uh, The Last of Us Part 2 is 10 to 30% longer than The Last of Us Part 1. <laughs> However, this Ele is the most detailed presentation we've ever done. Like, if you think about the presentation for T1, 
where we kind of talk about the quarantine zone in somewhat detail, even though most of it changed. And then it's like, and here are some things that might happen with Joel and Ellie. They might go into a spore filled subway tunnel. They might fight some cannibals. Uh, at some point, Joel will get incapacitated. And this has everything figured out, uh, even though it might change. Um, every character is accounted for, every cinematic is accounted for in this presentation, which means it's going to feel. Eu vou diminuir um pouco a legenda porque tá pegando na câmera. Desculpa, gente, calma. É, como é que faz mesmo legenda? Opções. É, vou colocar um 75%. Twice as long as the first game. So when you freak out, that's normal, that's part of this. Pô, eu queria que ele tivesse filmado o dia que ele foi com a Ashley Johnson. É, jantar com a Ashley Johnson oh, e contou a história inteira pra ela. Hours, so you break. <risos> Espero que o documentário inteiro seja um, ele contando so isso. Pô, que bom que isso está sendo filmado. Uhum. Ah, eu gosto de ver a Ellie. Correto, né? Porque realmente começa algumas semanas. There's a doorway leading down to this basement, uh -huh, uh -huh. and Ellie sees Tommy, and he's just finished climbing out of this basement, and he's hurt bad, and he's rambling about something needed to go after these people. Ellie's trying uh -huh. to ask him what happened, where's Joel, and he doesn't make any sense to her, and she starts to go downstairs. Tommy grabs her hand and tries to stop her, but he's too weak. She rips her arm away, and she heads down. And with each step, her heart races faster and faster. She sees this trail of blood. Uh -huh. She opens the door. Revealing Joel's mutilated body. And then shock just sets in and she <laughs> screams and tries to grab his body. And Dina comes and rips her away. And on that cacophony of sounds, silence. Oh, we're just getting started. <clears throat> E, pô, muito, ficou muito melhor no, no jogo final, né? O jeito que acontece. Imagina você andar de patinete pelo seu trabalho. I've been working on this game since we finished. Well, really, been thinking about it since we finished The Last of Us. So many people were like, Last of Us 1 is so perfect. It should never have a sequel. They shouldn't make a sequel. They're like, oh, it wrapped up super great. Uh -huh. uh, but I think actually, if you look at the ending. Swear to me that everything that you said about the fireflies is true. Ellie is accepting a lie. I swear. Okay. She has a very good bullshit detector. Olha ali. She knows something doesn't feel right, but I think is too scared at that point to ask. How long can you really live with accepting a lie like that? The Last of Us feels like an origin story for the survivor in this post-apocalyptic world. Seeing like how Ellie has become <laughs> such a strong, unique character, it really felt like you know if we were to do a sequel, it'd be a shame for it not to focus on her. Assim, antes de mais nada, fico feliz que estejam usando a versão original do jogo aqui para representar o The Last of Us 1. Assim, se eu tivesse que apostar, eu diria que eles usariam o remake, que o remake teria substituído para sempre o primeiro jogo, mas bom que não. Move the fuck out of the way. You know, once we're done with this whole thing, I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar. Yeah, I reckon you'd really like that. What do you say, huh? Joel, he's gonna teach Ellie to play guitar. That I always felt like that's just this like unanswered promise that like was kind of lingering at the end of, of the first game. We did this thing called One Night Live, where mm -hmm. we had the actors come on stage and reenact certain scenes. So you say we get you to the Fireflies. What happens next? Marlene, she said that they have their own little quarantine zone and that doctors are 
E aí eles fizeram uma cena no final aí, Que não passou na live Triste E aí, essa cena Eu já acho que eu falei disso no podcast, né? Mas essa cena tinha só a descrição dela na Wiki Durante, quer dizer, até hoje, né? Não, ninguém viu essa cena Acho que a gente tá vendo pela primeira vez agora I'd surely lose myself Trying sometimes you'll succeed To make this man of me Our future days Days of you and me Pô, oh, ele já tava lá, né, gente? Que coisa louca She's yours não, não, não. Eu não sei a primeira coisa sobre isso. Ei, eu prometi que eu ia te ensinar como jogar. Essa cena termina com Ellie holding a guitarra e jogando uma nota. Hoje ele tá soltando raio pela guitarra. Pois é, né? Essa voz 3 tá muito louco mesmo. E essa imagem foi tão forte na minha mente que eu estou seguro que isso se tornou em todo o mundo. Quando foi essa live? Acho que 2014. 2014, no máximo 2015, é, 2014, isso. Eu comecei a momentum. Uncharted 4 needed all hands on deck. Naughty Dog had always made one game, uh, and as soon as it finishes one game, it works on another. When I started um, on Uncharted 3, We were starting to experiment then with um, trying to do two teams. After we finished Uncharted 3, I jumped onto Uncharted 4. At some point in time, Uncharted 4 was coming down to the wire and it's just, we had to shift resources and pretty much everyone just ended up on Uncharted, trying to finish it up. E assim, vale lembrar que Uncharted 4 não começou como um projeto do Neil Druckmann e do Bruce Straley, né? Ele era um projeto da Amy Hennig, que ela tava fazendo com o... Sempre esqueço o nome daquele cara. Que agora é o parceiro dela que tá fazendo com ela o jogo do Pantera Negra. Ele senta... Que trabalhou com ela naquele jogo cancelado do... É, Stashwick, como é que chama? É, alguma coisa Stashwick. Que, que era um ator também, também tava escrevendo junto dela. Ou produzindo, não sei. E eles trabalharam juntos naquele jogo cancelado de Star Wars e agora estão trabalhando no do Pantera Negra. E aí, de, por algum motivo, que a gente não sabe ainda exatamente, a Amy Hennig... Foi, foi tirada, foi convidada a se retirar <risos> da Naughty Dog. E aí o Bruce Trailer e o, e o Neil Druckmann assumiram o Uncharted 4. Tanto que se você vê o primeiro trailer do Uncharted 4, ele fala de uma outra história. Tipo, não é a história do, do jogo final, assim. Ele mudou no, no meio. Então eu disse, ok, antes de eu come on, like em full force on Uncharted 4, eu just want to capture this trailer. Tá escrito errado aqui, ó, é, em cima da, da cabeça dela, é anjo. Faltou o N. Joe. <risos> On the path of the right Cause I'm wrong During the entire production of Uncharted 4 That's all I could think about I had a lot of investment in Uncharted 4 But the day we were done with Uncharted 4 I went right back to that trailer to wrap it up Anything for this shot that's still happening? Deixa eu ver o que, que ele do que, que ele está falando. Vamos tentar observar o que ele e o Joe mais está criticando. Of the 
que você está falando, Neil Druckmann? Ah, o machucado, talvez? Ah, talvez seja o machucado. Entendi. Acho que era o movimento do dedo. É, vão falar do crunch, sim, supostamente. Não sei o quão aprofundado vai ser, o quão honesto vai ser, né? Mas no trailer fala que eles vão falar assim. I see my biggest fear with this announcement is that it leaks early. More than anything, I have nightmares about this trailer leaking early before <laughs> we get to PSX. Imagina quando vazou, né? Caralho. Quando não não o trailer, né, mas o informações do jogo. Cachorro. If we're going to surprise people, PSX. Pior que eu lembro, o oh. Eu tava na BGS quando isso tava acontecendo. Eu acho. Não, pera. Foi nessa PSX que anunciaram o, o Uncharted de Lost Legacy também? Se foi, eu tava na BGS. Eu acho que é. Yet, as a place where big titles get revealed. That's E3. Ah, é isso mesmo. Tava na BGS. We're vendo no celular assim. Single player content at the opening of the show. You're late. I thought you were professional. Oh, you should relax. We'll live longer. Esse DLC é muito brabo, viu? Esse, sei lá, standalone. No one's gonna expect a second night. Oh, Max Cerny. Oh, Herman Hulst. Please welcome to the stage, Sean Layden. There's one more, there's one more special unveil we have for you tonight. Please enjoy. Que será que é? When we first revealed The Last of Us, the Naughty Dog logo came up and the crowd erupted and, and it was such a high that that's almost been like chasing the dragon, like wanting to recapture that feeling. <laughs> Playing it at this surprising moment, I'm hopeful it will have a similar feel. A mentirada começou a mentirada. What are you doing, kiddo? People outside the studio have such an attachment to the first game, and I've definitely seen fears about not wanting to make a sequel because somehow, if it's bad, it will tarnish your feeling about the first game. I'm gonna find, and I'm gonna kill every last one of them. We're doubling down on those fears and not calling it The Last of Us some subtitle. It's The Last of Us Part Two to say it's all one story. Tá fazendo, nem faz parte. É a enfermeira no primeiro só. The concept for the sequel had to feel compelling enough, um, have enough weight that felt like, okay, this is an experience worth creating, worth spending the next three years on. I became really um, intrigued with the idea of the cycle of violence and how, like, certain events would trigger acts of violence that then would beget more acts of violence. It's almost never satisfying. It never brings the person you love back. And despite you thinking it's going to bring some closure, it doesn't. We just need more empathy. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could create an experience that would safely Obrigado explore pela... those feelings? Sua... With that theme, Muito all of a sudden everything fell into place and this outline emerged. The whole catalyst for what starts the second game is Joel killing the doctor. No! Ah, com certeza vai falar sobre Israel e Palestina num documentário de The Last of Us Part 2. Sequence of events 
we're gonna start the game where you're playing a new character. That sequence ends with this character killing Joel. And we really have to paint her as this monster. Then when you play the next chunk of the game and you're Ellie and you're gonna pursue justice, quote unquote, and you're gonna go kill this entire crew. We're gonna go back in time and show you that same sequence of events this character that you saw as a monster to now get you to see things from her perspective and how this crew is a bunch of people trying to survive in this world and they had their reasons for pursuing and finding Joel and killing him. And the story was becoming very epic and ambitious and, and I had a few parts that I was kind of stuck on and I felt like to kind of shake things up, I wanted to bring in another writer. I thought it was a very thoughtful story about violence and obsession. He had Abby, sort of like this girl who was the daughter of the doctor. And that Ellie would go on this vengeance quest. And when he was like, and then Ellie actually kills Abby. Só pra contextualizar esse papo da, do, da, do... Perguntar se vai falar de Israel e Palestina é porque o, o Neil Druckmann já disse numa entrevista que essa, esse questionamento dele sobre ciclo de violência vem de uma experiência que ele teve, né? Crescendo na Cisjordânia, é, onde ele viu um soldado é, sendo torturado, um soldado... É, de Israel, né? Sendo, tortula, sendo torturado e tal num vídeo... E aquilo deu muito ódio pra ele, ele assim, ele ficou com muito, muita raiva e muita vontade de, de retribuir aquela violência, né? É, e, e aí, muita gente usa isso pra dizer que... Que por conta disso, ele é... Por conta disso, a mensagem do jogo é pró-Israel ou alguma coisa assim. E assim, eu não duvido que o... Que o, que o Neil Druckmann seja, né? Eu não vi ele comentando sobre, não coloco minha mão no fogo por ele, mas eu acho que fazer esse salto pra tirar essa mensagem do The Last of Us 2, eu acho que é um, um salto, sem dúvida um salto. Eu was like, what? Tipo, é algo que aconteceu yeah. quando ele era muito jovem, sabe? Yeah, ele absolutamente não... Oh, era, é só uma reação visceral, assim. Challenging what the story can be. Não duvido também, Elisa. She wanted to add more romantic intimacy between the characters. Those are areas that I've been, I don't know, more uncomfortable writing that stuff. After the first day, she was telling me that she went home and told um, her husband that I think I just got Ellie's girlfriend pregnant. Because uh, that was her. Teve isso dele, dele ter assinado essa carta? Eu, não, eu não, realmente não vi. Uh, deixa eu dar uma... Porque realmente tem essa dúvida. Ele... Que aí... Vê aqui... Alguém postou uma foto dele, dele, dele postando no, no Instagram uma foto da bandeira de Israel. Parece fake, mas vamos sentar para pesquisar mais fundo. Espera aí. Como que foi isso? Ok, bem, bem claro aqui então. 
Um puta de um, de um sionista safado. Sem... É isso. Sionista safado. Ok. Então, ok, pronto. Tá confirmado. Tá... Não é fake, tá no Instagram. Eu achei que fosse fake. Um grandíssimo de um pau no cu. Tá aí. Confirmado. Her big idea the first day, and um, that had this trickle-on effect and actually added a lot to the story. Ellie is this very relatable character. I thought she was a perfect vehicle to challenge this notion that violence doesn't have a cost, because it does have a cost in reality. It's going to ruin this girl. You know, people love Joel and Ellie, and we are about to kill one and make the other one a villain. I was very nervous telling Troy we're going to kill off Joel. In the first game, he was advocating that Joel should die. When I read the ending to part one, I was like, Oh, I mean, you're going to piss a lot of people off. Let me go. Marlene is the closest thing to a parent that Ellie has had outside of Joel. You just come after her. A lot of people got hurt, and Marlene would be one of those people. Joel has crossed these moral lines, and therefore he deserves to die, and he thought it might be a more dramatic ending. And I was like, no, you're crazy. Like, But then in the second game, that's why I was like, thought, of like, oh, he would take it pretty easily. He goes, so Joel dies, and... And he's like, and so this happens, and then, and, and I literally had to stop. I was like, can you give me just a second? Because it literally was as if someone was telling me about how my friend had just died. I think he kind of took it hard. It was like the character meant so much to him. É uma coisa ele querer que o que o que o Joe morresse antes do primeiro jogo lançar, né? Daí depois do impacto que o jogo teve e tudo mais. É mais, eu acho que é mais difícil, fica mais apegado. Se a gente vai fazer um segundo jogo e já descobre que vai morrer no começo, né? Pesado. We're gonna kill off this character, his role is gonna be much smaller on, on this one. All of a sudden it was, please don't take this from me yet. Ellie is scared to be alone. Everybody that she's loved up until that point, she's lost them. It's hard to imagine the story without Joel dying. Like, you feel that hate, Ellie feels that hate. You're one to one, you're on the stick, and that informs the rest of the story. This way, come on! Grande momento. You okay? Yeah. We get you through interactivity to really connect and empathize with this character. Felt like like you heard of us or something. And then make you feel like I've led Joel to a trap. No! No! When we started out making Last of Us Part Two, uh, Neil actually wanted to be very ambitious about changing the game almost entirely. That's weird. In the first like four or five months, the game was actually an kind of an open world uh, inspired by Bloodborne. Wow. Oi. <laughs> que? Agora? Ah, tá aí uma informação nova para mim. <laughs> and like it was purely melee focused, like it was all in combat. Pô, tá, explica-se por que que o melee do do 2 é tão melhor. It wasn't just the melee combat, we were also looking at sort of layout structure. <laughs> Bloodborne had a very sort of an open space that sort of kept Foda. getting bigger and bigger as Sei you que explore. No Last of Us 2. I really like that feeling that you get of mastery over the world. It starts to become kind of almost a character in the game itself. And so that was also something we were looking at. We started out making it as different as humanly possible from the first game as we could, uh, and then kind of dialing it back. The open world thing didn't work with the story that we were trying to tell and stuff. So in pre-production, we spent a lot of time just doing setups. I've got your back. Self-contained sort of units 
that tried to expound on a single sort of idea. <laughs> Trying to start out with sort of simple shapes and building up to. Infectado nadando não tem não, né? Acho que não. More complex shapes and starting out with uh, <laughs> one or two mechanics and building up to those mechanics. Huh? Hey! Even our experiments, we try to add like as much context as we can. Like we establish a goal that you're going to be going for. Um, we establish beats so that there's like an emotional journey. The stakes are raised. Aqui não é nenhum diálogo provisório, né? É uma descrição do que vai acontecer, provavelmente numa cena mais cinemática, assim. Going for, um, we establish beats so that there's like an emotional journey, the stakes are raised. Figuring out some traversal stuff, a lot of climbing and balance beams and seeing how far we can sort of push in that direction without it getting over the top like uncharted. More sort of verticality. More no YouTube, of, uh, grass and stealth. Uh, my name is Arnaldo Lisa. And what do you do here? Uh, I do design. Yeah, I know. How long have you been doing that? <laughs> A day. <laughs> I got an opportunity to work in QA, and that was um, that was a great learning experience. Uh, I shipped The Last of Us and Uncharted 4. The thing I'm proudest of is the people who came in to a quality assurance job as a contractor, which is entry level work, and uh, used that job to get to where they ultimately wanted to be. When I interviewed for the QA position, I specifically said that my goal was to be a designer. Pessoal com rosto borrado provavelmente que não deu a uh, autorização, né, pro documentário. He had formed this relationship with design where they knew they could rely on him, spending his free time designing a demo and at the same time him going to them and not being like here's 50 bugs you need to fix. He went to them and was like what do you need? How do I help you? What kind of bugs do you need? And for their part, they embraced him and were like, why don't we show you how to lay out nav mesh? I am anxious to to prove myself. There is no babying when you start. It's it just hits the ground running. If I don't cut it, I go back to QA or find Trabalho something else. Trabalho enquanto eles dormem. We're trying to figure out at the moment uh, how we handle big spaces, uh, bigger than the first game. The enemies are so, like too spread out to be really considered like one single small encounter, um, and seeing what behaviors we need to start developing for them to make it look good. The opening of Seattle, that whole section was pretty slow and quite linear in the level design. Let's assume that there's guys in this building, someone's starting to shoot at me from the second floor. So, okay, if I'm on the horse and I'm getting shot at, I can't take cover with the horse, so I'm probably first thing I'm going to do is jump off. And that's slow, slow and clumsy. And bem, bem maybe stuff. we can make that faster. It's like, but once I jump off, I'm going to want to take cover behind something. It's like, okay, I'm taking cover. Now what the fuck do I do with this horse? Um, it's, I assume the enemies are going to shoot at it. If they don't, that's kind of weird. Uh, does Dina ride off with the horse to help it uh, stay Bom, safe? Well, that's that's what she does. No? A relationship with Dina, and if my partner leaves me, that makes me like her less. I'm like, okay, so D Dina has that's to true. get off the horse and take cover with me and help me engage with the enemy. Yeah, o cavalo vai embora. Okay, but the horse is still there. So what happens with this horse? Does it ride off on its own in order to like protect itself and then come back after? Oh, that feels too intelligent for a horse. That seems a little funny. As soon as there's range combat, the horse kind of makes it fall apart. What if I remember the contest in the on foot? How do I approach this building? Imagine this is more dense with cars and ferns and interesting ways for me. Cena de combate com cavalo tem, ué, nessa parte de Seattle, que é aberta, você pode engaje, começar a engajar em combates com o um cavalo, não? Tipo, tem bichos que você, tipo, ou é tudo 
Na parte que você anda com o cavalo, nunca tem ninguém. Uma boa questão agora. Talvez, esteja, talvez tenha razão. Nunca tem ninguém, né? É... Os inimigos estão dentro de prédios, é verdade. Ou então por trás de portões, alguma coisa assim. Eu tive essa pequena guerra com esse lado frente antes de que eu pudesse rushar e ir para esse edifício, climb up e pegar o arco de sharp. Esse modo de teleporte é muito bom. Muito simples, uma pequena luta. Agora há tensão. Os caras podem vir de qualquer lugar, como desse rooftop, dessas portas. And that really inspired us to... Mas agora, isso daqui também é interessante de pensar, porque eu de fato acho que essa primeira área de Seattle ela é muito única, né? Tipo, em questão de, de quão aberta ela é. E pensar que teve esse momento que o jogo era pra ter sido mais aberto, né? Tipo, um, como eles falam, um Bloodborne. É, menos linearzão estilo The Last of Us faz sentido, né? Que eles fizeram primeiro essas áreas talvez ainda tendo essa ambição, tendo essa ideia e aí o jogo vai ficando mais linear com... É, à medida que ele vai... Ele vai avançando. Tipo, no, no podcast eu até falo, né? Tem como até se extrapolar uma razão narrativa por isso, né? Que nesse começo a, a Ellie e a Dina estavam procurando a, a Abby ou procurando os WLF, né? Então eles têm uma área maior, né? Pra, pra procurar. Então faz sentido ser uma área aberta, né? E aí quando você tá jogando com a Abby, por exemplo, ela já conhece Seattle. Então ela tem um caminho linear pra seguir pra onde ela quer ir e tal. Mas obviamente... Que na, eu sempre tive essa sensação também que tipo... Nossa, que, que estranho, né? Ele, ele é bem aberto no começo e depois ele afunila. Uma funila também, ele tem áreas grandes depois, mas nunca uma área tão grande quanto essa. Take some pretty drastic changes as far as Sim, não falo de linearidade como algo negativo, não. Combat, opening up the layout to give the player more options as far as they explore the city. Eu, eu gostaria que tivesse mais uma área dessa aberta, talvez uma com a, com a Abby, assim, mas não, não, não acho linear é, negativo, não. Kind of the hub. Now there's tension. Guys can come from anywhere, like from this rooftop, from these windows. And that really inspired us to take some pretty drastic changes as far as the flow, inserting more combat, opening up the layout to give the player more options as far as they explore the city. You can imagine this as being kind of the hub with it poking into streets and I could go into the streets and explore and find those locations, what we're kind of calling dungeons. So that's the plan. Uh, some of these changes are big, but it got us excited. This feels like a true. É bem essa vibe mesmo, né? Dungeonzinhas assim. E pelo menos umas três, né? O banco e as duas que podem ter o combustível. Scale. It's about scope. It's about can we actually build this thing? The scope is always bigger than the last game. It always has been. It always will be, probably. Espero que não. But this scope on this game is is something pretty extraordinary. Everyone seems to agree that the thing we're building is going to be cool. Once it's done, it's just that it's such a big, such a big game. Our games have become more and more ambitious, and uh, the studio. Part inspired in Chalice Dungeon, I saw you now, which is No Return, which is Rogue Like. It has gotten a lot bigger. When I started here, were 40 people. Now we're over 300. Well, you can't handle well. that many people with a flat hierarchy. As we grew, we've had to introduce new titles just to. Control management, control communication, make sure things don't fall through the cracks. We have no producers at Naughty Dog. There's so many talented people here that you can rely on and lean on. It makes the game better. And that's really kind of the secret sauce of Naughty Dog is how collaborative it is. You find the right people who really want to do the best they can possibly do, and then you kind of give them the resources to try. You're getting what you asked for as a creative person, right? You're, like, you're kind of getting the freedom to go as far as you can go, but sometimes I think we need to be saved from ourselves a little bit. With uh, The Last of Us 2, there's a real sense of opportunity. This is going to be uh, a much cleaner production than we've done in the past. We're going to get it right mm -hmm. this time. This is the first project that has the problem. We're get it right this time. Ó, oh, L flashback guitar, patrol Jackson, tracking. Patrol, tracking hard, ok. Patrol chalé, patrol departure. Seattle arrival, Jordan escape. Jordan escape. 
Quando você tá na escola, talvez, né? Provavelmente, Watchtower. Teatro. L Flashback Museu. Aham. Uhum. Rescue Jesse. Ok, né? É... Como é que chama? Hillcrest, né? Hillcrest aqui. L Flashback Patrol com Tommy. Encontra na hora hospital. L Flashback Ultimatum no, no hospital de, 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 de coisinha lá. Flooded City, aqui é o terceiro dia. Encontra no aquário, aqui é do, da, da Eb, né? Um, Peraí, aqui tem. Aqui tinha mais, aqui tem mais coisa. Entre esses dois aqui tem mais coisa. Finding Aquarium. Não, esse aqui é L ainda. Pô, eu tô maluco. Ah, é. Aqui. Ah, não, é meio que isso, né? Só que essa parte aqui é bem longa. Aí você vai pra Aquário, é isso mesmo, tá certo. É, teatro. É, flashback, beleza. Aqui faz a troca. Ford Base, beleza, indo pro FOB. Saving Kids, correto, né? Ali. Medicine, indo buscar no hospital. Amputação, volta pro, pro aquário. Salva leve. Indo pra Ilha de Serafitas. É... Ah, isso aqui é in, in, no caminho, né? Ab fight, não, isso aqui já, já é ilha. Pô, cortou um pedaço aqui. Entre esses dois aqui tem um pedação também. Ab fights militia. Deve ser na ilha, né? Quando ela já enfrenta o WLF. Ab L fight, beleza? Farm, Santa Bárbara e Epilo. É, é, de certa forma. De certa forma, tá tudo aqui. Queria saber o que, que é cada uma dessas cores. Ah, cada uma das cores, ok, aqui. Então, o Daniel Harrison estava mexendo no Medicine e no Find Nora, talvez. Interessante. Time. This is the first project. Ai, ah, caralho. Peraí, gente, desculpa. Done in the past. We're gonna get it right this time. This is. Fob, Fob Isaac. Entendi. The first project that has had the proper pre-production period where é, me manda o, o XLS aí. Beginning, middle and end before we started production. That hasn't happened. I don't know if that has ever happened. <laughs> that I think about it. It's a very very messy process, which is again why it's a lot of times really difficult to schedule. I think right now we are planning on Springtime of 2018. Mm -hmm. So when Springtime 2018 comes around, The Last of Us 2 isn't in stores. Um, you can look back at this and say, uh, well, I guess they their plan wasn't exactly set in stone. Acho que o, o, o prazo já é já é com já é com risadinha, né? Tipo, <risos> ah, primavera de 2018. Ah, esses pândegos. Historically, we've done very poorly at um, being efficient uh, without the pressure of an external deadline. Every time we have some showing of our games, if it's going to be seen publicly, it's got to be one of the best looking playing things in the industry. For example, the first trailer was coming online and that forced us to define the look of our game, define the location of where the game takes place, define Ellie's look and her age and her hair and her outfit. We're forced to make those choices. We can't just keep iterating because there's a deadline. We want to try and schedule the game using these milestones as soon as possible. Assim, eu acho que eles vão tocar no assunto de crunch, mas não necessariamente o jogo ter sido adiado dois anos significa que os dois anos que ele foi adiado tenha sido em crunch. Acho difícil dois anos de crunch. Né? Eu acredito que tenha que ter sido crunch nesses dois anos, sim. Mas os dois anos inteiros em Crunch, acho pouco, pouco provável. Which means Mas vamos ver, we gotta keep quem sabe. Rolling, which means next E3, six months away, we need to look at a gameplay demo. E3, it's always been the biggest and most extravagant showing of the game industry. There's something special about the energy of E3. We need to figure out the gameplay is, because right three. now it's just we've got a bunch of like cool prototypes and stuff like that, so it's scary, but we work well under pressure. We were hoping to be really aggressive and show at E3 2017 just to really kick the project into gear as fast as humanly possible. We want to break it up into a roughly two-minute cinematic, a flashback sequence that will set kind of 
emotional context for what will then go into a five minute uh, gameplay sequence. We want to do this um, festival within Jackson. Like mm -hmm, there'll mm -hmm. be like a live band and we're just seeing people lively having fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For the crowd, are you thinking 30 plus people? Frank says we could do a 30 variation. I think we can make that work with 30. Yeah. Uh, Dina pulls Ellie onto the dance floor. Ellie's dancing with her, he's making all these guys jealous, and then Dina says, you want to make them really jealous? And she leans over and kisses her, and on that, we do a hard cut to Ellie in the middle of the woods. Um, so the idea is we shouldn't see any buildings, just woods, water, ankle-deep water rushing underneath <coughs> her. What about uh, rain? Are we still going rain? Uh, I haven't discussed it with the other guys, but... That demo that we show externally for the very first time is setting the bar for the rest of development. But the problem is we're also working on Charted 4 Lost Legacy. So E3 is June 13th, which means probably we want to be done, what, like two weeks before that, which is four... I don't know if they're going to... Pro... É, eles já estão indo pra três, né? Então não, vai, não vão falar do trailer da Abby, não, né? realmente. With Lost Legacy shipping at around the same time of E3, uh, there are shared resources between the two projects, especially sound and particle effects. So they were all on Uncharted. And when it comes to the polish space, both we're polishing this and that at the same time, and SPD also yeah. at the same time. I don't, I, I don't think there's any specific item that needs to be worked on, but I think it's, there's going to be programmer time doing both those things. And there are going to be times when we're, it's like this needs polishing in E3 and this needs polishing in SBDLC, and like we're going to have to compromise the times, maybe. We kind of just didn't have it at the forefront of our minds that, yeah, they're freaking shipping a video game. It's literally the hardest part of making the game is shipping it. And we were trying to ship a demo, the second hardest thing you can do, at the same time and sharing a lot of their resources. Uh, so one thing would be helpful is to find... Talvez esse... esse... É que eu não lembro quando foi... Foi 2018 mesmo, né? O... É porque eu acho que eles, no momento... Eu acho que eles estão no momento 2017 que o, o Uncharted Lost Legacy é 2017, né? Então... É... Find out what are the items that you feel like you're most worried about? Like, let's say rain. We can do this thing without rain. So if that helps you a ton, we can make the decision now to remove rain. It would definitely help. How about wet hair? Well, if she's going to be swimming, then... I got like a really clear energy of the meeting, which was uh, how do we shrink it? It was such an impossible task. You can't help but start feeling some doubt, some anxiety about the leadership, not understanding the logic of it. Uh, you know, I think like anybody else here, I was definitely ready to roll my sleeves and figure it out. É, não estamos na pré-produção não. É, Roberto, já já é a produção, mas eu acho que essa altura eles já já é, eles já têm a, a, a Laura como web sim e tanto que ela aparece na, na foto, né? Ela, ela tira a foto no, no anúncio lá. Tô tentando relembrar da timeline aqui porque eu acho que o trailer que eles estão falando não é 2017 não. Ah, eles estão no começo de 2017, ok, então vai demorar ainda. Talvez eles ainda falem do trailer da Abby. And it matched up with feelings that we were having, so we started discussing the responsibility of actually attempting this and started to feel that it was a little bit irresponsible. Um, that if we were to try to meet both these deadlines, we could probably do it, but we would end up doing a lesser job on both projects, both deadlines, than um, we would if we were doing it individually. And 
feels like they're both important enough to give them the due attention. So the conclusion that definitely is there is that the demo that was discussed yesterday will not send it to E3. Um, yeah. Okay. Does it mean that our main point should be just focusing on more shipping before? The last easy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, but I mean, uh, we should still try to, uh, we don't, like I said, just want to just completely halt work on this and, you know, all hands on deck on, on, you know, yeah. so on. The idea is still to finish the demo just to give us a buffer so that these two deadlines aren't overlapping. Okay. It's just now we have more time to work on this demo properly without the pressure. Once that meeting happened, it was just like, right, of course. I I'm not know. in the Twilight Zone. Um, it makes sense not to do this. It felt really nice seeing the leadership kind of have, having the teams back and seeing the logic of the situation in front of them. That's it. Cool. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, so yeah. are you pissed off? I want to wait to see the documentary completo to see how they're going to talk about the question of the crunch, because... Pode ser muito... É, então, pode ser, pode ser honesto e eles estão... E eles estão mostrando uma decisão correta feita pela liderança. Ou... É... Né, eles estão mostrando só as coisas onde pessoas falaram positivamente, né? Sobre... É... Sobre isso. A liderança é aquele cara que tava sentado ali, é o Nate Wells, se eu não me engano. Ele era, ele era né, o presidente da, da Naughty Dog antes do, do Neil Druckmann. Am I pissed off? Uh, no. Uh, what am I? Uh, I guess on one sense it's relieved. Evan Wells. Yes. We... There was concern of whether we could hit the quality that we know we need to hit for both... Lost Legacies and for our what was going to be our Neil Druckmann tá, ah, maldito Uncharted sempre atrapalhando os meus planos. I'm excited to get this demo done and get it out there and get the reaction. So now it's going to have to happen at some other point. What we've decided to do is deliver the demo at around the same time, uh, but that's going to be purely internal and the demo. E se vocês acharam que essa foi uma reunião tensa, é, vocês realmente deveriam assistir é, o Psychodice. Uh, rapaz. Tem umas ali que você acha que vai sair soco. Demo won't be 100. I'm excited to get this demo done and get it out there and get the reaction. But now it's going to have to happen at some other point. What we've decided to do is deliver the demo at around the same time. Um, but that's going to be purely internal and the demo won't be 100% shippable. Gameplay and design and animation are going to be locked in June. Then like we back off we finish Lost Legacy, and then resources free up to finish the particle effects, the lighting, and the sound. And then we ship just the glossiest, best-looking demo you've ever seen. We burn that to a disc at the beginning of January, and then we don't touch it again. Hmm. And nobody sees it until Vamos E3. Ver o quanto it's que esse plano vai dar certo. Really interesting to see if we can really, really commit to being done, you know, hmm. five months, Ousado. six months in advance of E3. Ousado. And not be tempted to say like, eh, it could be a little better. Let's go back. And we, we really just need to have the discipline not to do that. Um, but that then left us as like, okay, what's our next marketing beat? What else, what are we going to show next from this game? So now we have a new plan where we're going to release a cinematic um, around PSX time. I think we're mm -hmm, going to do it at the mm -hmm. Paris. So that, show. that, that okay. seemed like a pretty intriguing scene to introduce Abby. That whole scene is going to be our next marketing beat, and then we're not going to say much about it, about how this fits into the game, where it fits into the game. Abby evolved over time, and if you look at the concept art, like the character looked very different than where we've ended up. I don't remember at what point we decided to go with someone like really kind of muscular and broad, but I remember once the idea came up, it felt very fresh. 
Once we sort of nailed down the body of Abby, we played around with different ideas of how we wanted to accentuate her arms or not. And there's something interesting in Abby feeling a lot like Joel. So when I got cast, Neil was like joking around. He's like, you should probably beef up in order to play her. And I'm like, ha ha ha, yeah, it's mocap, whatever. And he goes, no, really, you should probably beef up to play her. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I should totally start deadlifting as much as possible. So I did, and I was training like crazy. And then I got pregnant. Eh, what are you going to do? We need to separate her from Ellie. It shouldn't feel like I'm playing a reskin that Abby should in many ways look, behave, fight. Differently. Por favor, é... Laura Bailey, não seja uma acionista, safada. So in gameplay we've discussed, well, she needs to have different upgrade trees. It means we have to make the investment of capturing a whole different moveset for Abby. We can't just remap Ellie's animation onto Abby. Holy fuck. Abby has a fear of height, and there's stuff we're doing with the camera to make you feel vertigo. Uh, and that helps build empathy and makes this character real. Essa parte é tranquila. We let you both live. And you, you wasted, wasted it. it. She's aesthetically a very intriguing and iconic and powerful character. Abby, who are these kids? They saved my life. Can you take a look at her? Once she's killed Joel, what is Abby's Control. motivation? What is she trying to achieve? Her redemption has really taken care of Yara and Lev, these two kids that are from a warring faction. You know, she has been taught to hate them. Ela nasceu com estadunidense, exato. Uh, reaction to them. <laughs> it's about saying, can you come to love your enemy? Scars built all this? Seraphites. Yeah, I was gonna say that. These are kids that grew up in a very different context as Ellie and, you know, how they live their lives and experience the world is totally different. How you present? I'm getting really attached to Lev. He's been able to keep his head up despite losing so much himself in a world that is so harsh. We're taking too long. <laughs> Can't move any faster. I won't do your sister any good if we're both dead. I really like his dynamic with Abby. Um... Her having this Difícil dizer o quão intencional é, mas sem dúvida é, é uma leitura que fica bem, bem clara, né? Quando se joga o jogo Mecha Ma Madeand. It's like fucking brassy little sidekick who, who calls her on her shit in a way that nobody else can. What's going on between you and your friend Owen? Oh my God, Lev, now? It seemed really awkward. Just go! Who understands the sort of sense of being orphaned in the way that um, a lot of people can't. How long have you two been on the run for? Two days. What the hell did you do? I shaved my head. They want to kill a little boy because he shaved his head. I am not trans, so it's a very delicate thing to tell a story of an experience that I have not had. Um, and that's something that we want to take seriously. Did you hear what they called me? Yeah. Do you want to ask me about it? Do you want me to ask you about it? No. Okay. It's really about trying to create a multifaceted character who is trans, and that is uh, absolutely an important part of who he is, but also a part of who he is, not the whole of who he is. <laughs> <laughs> right. As far as the Paris cutscene, I'm pretty stressed out. We have 13 days, less than two weeks to finish this thing, and there are still some big ticket items. Lost Legacy turned out to be a much bigger project than we originally envisioned, but now that it's done, everyone is now on board. We've got the green light demo done. She's, uh, she's putting on quite the show. Bella Jess. It's very real. <laughs> we're in full production now, so I guess that's the short of it, is we're in full production now. Yeah. 
Hey everybody, PlayStation's live at Paris Games Week 2017. We've got a huge show for you starting now. Wow. Ew. What a great way to open Paris Games Ew. Week. Let's have the first in-depth look at a much anticipated and exclusive title. Last of Us 2. Last of Us 2. Please, please, please be Last of Us 2. Our fans, they want to know every last thing about what's going to be in this game. Is this, is this The Last of Us? Neil has taken the way, you know, he kind of creates quando eu vi esse trailer, eu cravei. Flashback com a mãe da Ellie. Cravei. E eu estava 100% correto. Mal sabia eu que o flashback com a mãe da Ellie ia acontecer só na série. Crazily has brought it to marketing. I view marketing as part of the game. It's very calculated what we put out there and how we want you to connect different marketing assets. When we first released the teaser trailer, Too many people right off the bat said Joel is dead. The blown out light really, it really fucked us in a way I don't think any of us are coming. <laughs> We actually underestimated our audience a little bit. They're so sophisticated now, so you have to get more sophisticated, like how am I still going to surprise players and viewers? You start on characters you've never seen before in a world that like could be The Last of Us, could be anything that creates like a really really cool sense of tension. Muito doido que esse trailer também ele é mais bonito no jogo final do que no trailer. What is this? Yo, that looks good though. I was so excited about working on it and I couldn't say anything. It was so rough. Oh, she got to cut a baby out of her belly. And then tried for you find a comic book that uh -huh, shows uh -huh. Ellie's mom pregnant. Olha aí, so os caras perto. Com a maldade Ellie's no coração. Oh, we just kind of Black out the letters. She has the same number of letters as ah, não, é. Anna, Ellie's mom's name. Passei por tudo isso. Filho da puta. Oh my god, girls got a good. That hammer's from the outbreak poster. So we had that poster with the forearm of a character you've never seen before, mm -hmm. with this like kind of wolf's head in the background. What does that mean? You know, kind of like prompting this mystery. You want people to feel like they've figured everything out and then have the story surprise them. Man, if this is The Last of Us 2, bro, I'm gonna go crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Last of Us 2? Last of Us 2? É verdade, né? Tinha isso ainda. Tipo, imaginava-se que era dessa voz, mas só descobre mesmo quando aparece o clique no final, né? Shaping expectation. And then the final game, hopefully, if we do our job right, should subvert those expectations in an interesting way. <laughs> we knew we were pushing boundaries with that cinematic. We are making a violent game. We're not going to shy away from how violent it is. It is part of what we're trying to say. And I thought it was a great discussion initially about what is the appropriate level of violence? When is something so violent that it just turns you off where you just don't want to experience it at all? I like that they were wrestling with those things. I didn't like some of the insinuations about the trailer being misogynistic uh, towards the female characters. I don't think this story ever glorifies violence against women. There's no bias towards women or men. It just so happens that the two protagonists of this story are female, and therefore that's what you're going to see the most of. There has to be fail states in video games, which means a character has to be capable of being hurt. Oh so does that mean that there can be no female protagonists in video games? Um, because that feels super sexist to me. And frankly, like, women aren't the victims of violence, and don't we want to see women fucking fight back once in a while? That character, her hand getting hurt, it has consequences for hours of gameplay to come. One article even, like, asked the question, were any women involved in the making of this? And it's like, Yeah, the co-writer, the lead character designer, the lead character artist, all the actresses that worked on, on that scene. I... 
why that's so fucking... Here's what I hate about that article. I'm sorry. Do a modicum a of fucking research. Just a, just a modicum. Just a modicum of research. Just like a little bit before you put something out there to suggest that no woman could have worked on this because of the level of violence, because there was violence against women, because it is a video game. Is so fucking sexist. I like watching graphic violence. Does that make me less female? Like, I like having a conversation about what power is. Does that make me less fucking female? I like working at a video game. I like playing video games. Does that make me less fucking female? Like, suck a dick. Don't put that in. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Neil's gonna say put it in, but don't. Um, I also don't represent all women, but I represent, like, I can represent this and say, I fucking wrote this. I wrote this. Like, I literally wrote the sentence and then Yara eviscerates his, es his es es eviscerates his esophagus from his throat. I wrote that sentence that is in the script and I fucking stand by it. Eviscerar não tem a ver com viscera? I'm afraid of being turned into a token rather than okay, the truth, me. which is like we're being thoughtful about the female narrative. These characters are more than just their vaginas. If you want to have a serious debate about feminism and feminism in video games and female depiction uh, of violence, and you need to not see it as a binary a conversation. Não é uma it Fica is an incredibly nuanced conversation. You cannot make blanket statements and you cannot make presumptions. Fucking do your homework. I'm right here. I'm tweeting. Pão de cheiro do corpo, então tá aí. Refutado. Refutado. The tone of the violence in the game has always been important to portray as realistically as possible. Our job outside of just drawing up concepts is really pushing our reference pipeline um, to make sure that the character artists are getting the most realistic examples of whatever they're working on. We can't find certain things, so we make the reference ourselves. Simulating brain on wall. One, two, three. How is that? Oh, esse trabalho é bom. Eu queria. What does canvas look like when it's soaked in blood? <laughs> Splashing blood on them, dripping blood on them. Nice. We put down some wet mud, pooled blood onto it to see how blood would react to a wet dirt surface. So there's like little pieces of e era sangue de verdade. And like twigs and things that carry through, like there's actually movement following the edge. One of the animators got a piece of lamb and we stuck it in Yara's shirt sleeve and hit it with a hammer. Here we go. Yeah, we have a break. She's going to need to hold this as straight because if she does this, it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, the, just the weight of it's going to want to make it fold. So I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible. This past week's shoot was specific for the infected eating uh, people's jugulars. And there was a concept that was done with like blood running down the mouth. But it's like, would that happen? Like, let's find out. <laughs> Uh, I got Eu. on the ground and pretended to Meu cargo na Naughty Dog. Hit, like a bloody so drag that we made. <laughs> it produced some pretty surprising results because like most of my face got covered in blood. Look up a little, John, but yeah, teeth. People here will go to that length of trying to make sure that things feel as real as possible. Yeah, we do a lot of crazy stuff here. Nobody gets hurt, but... <laughs>
it's really hard to see these characters that you spend so much time with and for lack of a better word, kind of like, you know, birthing into existence, tortured and abused. We're shooting the Joel death scene, which is like the catalyst opening of the game. The scene has all of Abby's crew. It's a complicated scene because it's the most active we've ever had in a single shot. Menos do que Red Dead 2. Or, or, Joel doesn't die. Olha a Ashley Burch ali, gente. Quem viu? So then what happens is all of us become friends. Knowing what was going to happen and knowing how it was going to happen, I got very fearful. There's so much weight to this scene. This scene has to be right. It's really difficult to reshoot it if we need to. But in the first game, having to call Charlie Hannah back to reshoot Sarah's death was very, very, very difficult for me. The last time I tried to do a big emotional scene. Don't do this, please don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, please, God, no. Oh, God, no. Alguém entrega o Oscar para ele. And we had to reshoot it. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. Agora não entrega o Oscar para ele. Não gritou. How the hell am I going to play this? Like, how are we going to do this? I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have the the chops. Am I going to put Laura through this? Because I know how hard it's going to be on her. Audio, camera, I speak. Rolling. Take one, Mark. Action. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Miller. Who are you? Guess. Guess. Why don't you just get out of whatever speech you rehearsed? Get this over with. You don't get to rush this. Dan, I really loved what he brought to it. I couldn't wait to get back into Ellie's shoes again because it's where, weirdly, I feel most comfortable in a lot of ways because it feels like a, a character that feels the most like me that I've ever played, which is a little disturbing. I mean, minus like the murder <laughs> and the killing. So it's almost like a bit of a step forward, like you're oh, about you're to like lunge and shoot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. The biggest change that has happened since initial pitch is Ellie is there when Joel is killed. It used to be she came across the body, and then she had to rely on Tommy's testimony of what happened, and we shifted it, which made it much more dramatic and intense for her, uh, and I think puts more of it on screen and it allows you better to understand why she needs to pursue these people. <laughs> <laughs> The hardest part for me was looking over at Ashley. No! No! Knowing that, that Troy was going to not be a part of it as much was really hard. And knowing that Joel was not going to be in Ellie's life anymore, it was just, it was hard. So much of that day kind of feels like a blur because there were so many feelings involved in it. What I had to do, I felt was very, very little. There's one reaction, and beyond that, we're on Ashley. There was no acting. There was pure, raw emotion. I'm staring in the face of that. Joel! What are you doing this? Get the fuck off me! I'd lost a little bit of my voice. I couldn't scream like as loud as I wanted to, you know, to get that frustration and that sadness out. 
Ashley was behind crying and God. And knowing Abby was taking this away from her was very difficult. Um, and so I was crying when we were filming that scene. Yes, it was very emotional. You want what I want, right? End it. Now. Wait, please stop! No! No! Don't! Don't! No! No! We want him to die in this really unforgiving sort of way. Like, it needs to feel senseless for you to say, fuck these people, I'm gonna pursue them to the ends of the earth and make them pay. Oi, deve ter sido realmente difícil pra caralho de filmar, porque tem os dois lados, né, da cena. Depois você vê a mesma... Quer dizer, eu não sei que eles filmaram tudo de uma vez, né? Talvez não. Porque são... É... é... Talvez eles tenham filmado separado, né? Faria mais sentido depois junta tudo no, no computers. É porque é muita gente mesmo, né? Pô, muito, muito, muito atores e atrizes, né? Todo mundo aí. Joe will take a pass at the scene. And I'll give kind of high level notes. But he's doing it without animated cameras, without character models, without environment. And so it's a bit of a guessing game to see if this will work. So I like the concept. I felt like there was a lot of repetition and it felt long. Mm -hmm. Once like Joel's head gets smashed, I don't want a close up look of him. Okay. You know, what if we could do like the smash from the back of his head? Yeah, I want to. So it, just yeah. like you, it'd right. be like a black shape, and you see like a silhouette change, and like blood starts pouring out. But I don't focus on it. Like I don't see the details. Mm -hmm. When the club comes down, and it's just like she's screaming, mm. I feel like we could just take all their audio out, and like music could take over. And again, we're trying to build more rage than sadness. That's going to really set up our journey. Okay. I'll come back, and there'll be another version of the scene. Okay, play. Go fucking get up. Please stop. Please open the Oh. Oh. Overall, it's fucking awesome. Like I, I got emotional just the part where before he gets killed, it feels so fucking tense. There certainly is still a ton to do. We still have like 45 scenes that haven't even been looked at yet. It's terrifying given our deadline. Um, the process right now is just getting Neil. We just need, need to get Neil into the room. Which one are we showing first? We've got essentially three versions. The one that I did, and this would work with what we're talking about doing with this Opa. scene. And then... Ah, close one. Uh, I would probably say there are people standing this sometimes. yours, Mel, or I got bad news. Mel, yours, this. He's canceling. He's canceled. But we have the what? cameras set. This is he's supposed to come in. He's the actually. Oh it's God, it's I'll, good I'll we're it. getting this on camera. This is <laughs> what it's not about. This is what it's about. <laughs> um, yeah, he has some melee stuff to review today. He said, "Let's pick it up tomorrow." So yeah, that's what happens. And so it's like, okay, uh, all right, that's fine. I don't care. I don't care. Um, yeah. Ih, rapaz. I get called up to Neil's office one day. And there's like an empty seat. And Neil just goes like, oh, just sit down. I'm like, oh my God, I did something wrong. <laughs> and he's like, um, do you know why you're here? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, are we gonna talk about one of my levels? 
He's, and he laughs and he goes like, no, you're going to work on the E3 demo. It's always been a dream of mine working on an E3 demo, seeing it on stage. It's, am, am I get, is this a joke? Like, am I getting pranked right now? So speaking of, of E3 demos, remember way back when, like you guys said you were going to block that content and then not touch it? How's that guy? Well, and then we ship just the glossiest, best looking demo you've ever seen. We burn that to a disc <laughs> at the beginning of January and then we don't touch it again and nobody sees it until E3. Well, I think, I think we, we knew at the time that we weren't going to not touch it. It's going to be really interesting to see if we can really, really commit to being done and not be tempted to say like, eh, it could be a little better, let's go back. Because the, you know, the game's been making progress for you know, the, the 10 months or something since we blocked that demo down. A lot of advances have been made, a lot of new ideas, new mechanics, and we, we really just need to have the discipline not to do that. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like we are addicted to being late. Can you do? Okay, we're starting. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do today other than come up with a really long list. Uh, we're trying to limit it to an hour, so we'll be done at four no matter where we're at. Uh, looking at the cinematics first. Because we did it so early and had a ver like a rough version of it a year in advance, we got a bit complacent. <laughs> Oh, it's true. She's a. Oh, Opa! <laughs> sure is. Where are we on getting physics on these strands? We are working on it. So, for next time? For next time? Yes, yes. We didn't scramble to figure out what it is we're going to show. We had the structure of like the festival going into this fight in the woods in Seattle. But it was harder to build the momentum we usually have. And I think that panic just wakes everybody up and felt like it took us a bit longer to get there this time. So then you're going as if to kill this guy, see somebody over there. Sir, over here. Oh, it breaks. Yeah, the final of the Use your imagination. Yeah, I'm going a bit slower, give him some time. Okay. The animation is breaking the uh, melee system. Okay. So, like when he starts, yeah. Okay. So okay. I'm confident in the demo if we finish it. Uh, it. I'll be frank, it's not looking great. All right, this is totally broken. Let's, for next week, let's make sure it's all there so we could actually review it. Yep. Uh, okay, thanks everyone. I feel like this demo is cursed. Demo. It was a version of our That's original really green light demo. Scour. But I had to make it fully playable and shippable. Viper! <laughs> Essa demo que tem umas mentirada, né? Tem algumas assim. Just basically take that space made by another level designer and put just enemies Não in muitas it. Muitas mentiradas, mas algumas. But when I started playing, I remember like it just it wasn't there. That parking structure was way smaller, so it felt it felt more cramped. A luta contra aquele cara grandão não é tão. Não tem como ser tão cinematográfica quanto no, na demo. How much can I change this? A mentira faz parte, exato. What are you thinking? I'm like, well, I'm thinking like this big thing, and I'm like, just like brand new design, I'm just throwing out. É, tem essa. essa I want to do that, I want to make sure that feels like a sandbox. Ela, ela like esquiva e bate no carro, space, né? É, não paths, tem isso mesmo, não. Like we really haven't done before in The Last of Us. And he just goes, go for it. Well, let's do it. É, eu acho que tem que ter uma mentiradazinha assim também. Não muita. We picked a location in Seattle that essentially is probably the hardest lighting scenario we would have to pull off in the game. Não exatamente daquele jeito, Léo. Overcast look nailed because so much of the game's dependent on that. How do we pull off this look? Can we pull off this look? Everything felt a little muted and it we were losing kind of that next gen quality of our engine. Like for a second, we actually turned the sun on in the demo. But we lost the mood of that overcast kind of blue look. That moment was uh, really rough for me. Just felt like 
years of my life that potentially would have just been like wasted on this this pipe dream of, of a look. Well, we were struggling like last summer. We were it was like a fine balancing act. Is this whole thing just gonna crumble? Like, is the whole direction like now gonna have to change for the game, not just this demo? Have I steered this company wrong? Took some really big iterations and tried some crazy ideas, and we came up with kind of a hack. We talked with the programmers and found a few settings that actually gave us exactly what we wanted. It was really like one thing. We faked the sunlight within this kind of ambient look so we could get some directionality of the lighting. But it was like, oh, if we do this one thing, it actually got us the look we wanted. So like, I'm glad that happened. Hmm, yeah, that's nice. For this game, uh, there was a major push to make a new uh, volumetric fog system. It's not just like a kind of an overlay on top of the screen. You, that's why it's called volumetric. You feel the volume of it. It's gonna be a little bit thicker near the ground, right? Because there, you know, and you will see grass kind of getting through it. Fog also allows you to see the light. Ah, é, é um joguinho leve e divertido. É, é Dressa das Palmas dois, bem leve. Relaxar assim. Now with this game, we did add recently some new tech that allows us to make some of the water drips more dynamic, meaning that if you have a car, you will see a water, follow the glass, follow the hood, and then from the bumper, you're gonna start seeing dynamic droplets. Um, so that was really cool. And then we can now actually also use this technology to drive blood. Now we can have a blood dripping and Isso, have water dos dripping. games. Um deles. The water trail can pick up where is it bloody. Pô, isso é muito foda. O, a, a simulação de sangue desse jogo é muito, muito impressionante mesmo. Olha lá, a mãozinha. É foda. Really, really cool. In the E3 demo, we do want to show our next gen animation system. One of the biggest animation upgrades. Yeah, acho que essa é o que eles mostraram ali é o do jogo final, na verdade. Motion matching. The way that it works is it takes a pool of animation data and it picks the most appropriate clip to blend together and create just very fluid and organic movement. We want these characters to just feel grounded and believable in the world, properly shifting their weight and moving the way a real human would. In order to capture all of those on the stage, we use something called a dance card, a choreographed set of patterns that the actor can move on the floor. Basically, that's creating this like bank of little pieces of animation. The motion matching system just pulls from that bank all the animations necessary to have them move perfectly in any arbitrary way. When it works, it's like so far and away better than any other animation technique. It's like a, a quantum order in terms of quality. Vai ficar mais claro, né? Tipo uma versão sem o sistema e uma compra pra gente ver na prática a diferença. Mas assim, a animação do Dora Sua Voz 2 é absurdamente fluida mesmo. Any one mechanic is not any, maybe anything you haven't seen before. It's the combination of how it all comes together, the way it works with the animation system. The new stuff we're talking about is like, oh, you can be in grass. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. Like one of the biggest things we do in the demo is jump a gap. <laughs> it's tough to be like, oh crap, you can jump, you know, like. As divertido, depende do que você chama de divertido também. Uh... Não sei se eu diria que The Last of Us 2 é um jogo extremamente divertido, não. It's like it... the way it works with the animation system. The new stuff we're talking about is like, oh, you can be in grass. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. Like one é. of the biggest things we do in the demo is jump a ele, gap. É, ele é engajante. Divertido. Não sei se era a palavra que eu diria. You can jump, you know, like it's like but it's new to our game. We have to have the best prone mechanic of all time. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever seen when I aim in prone and she actually like rolls up on her back and aims like this. Locker! 
Like it can never clip through geometry. Being able to rotate 360 in all directions. It can never like do a janky thing when she's reloading while doing it or aiming in water. There's like an IK thing that like lift her chest and head up and then it gets too deep. Now we're in a special prone underwater. Cara, que é muito thing. doido mesmo. Quando você para pra pensar, quando você... Não, não Elisa, Metal Gear Solid 3 não fazia isso. Kind of Esse que é o lance. Nem de pé. Metal Gear Solid 3 é todo no durão. Oh, you know, it's not as good as, you know, this other game's one, but like, it's fine. It's got like, no, we, it's... Quando você começa a listar as coisas, realmente, caralho. Thing, whatever that is. Os caras são foda mesmo. Ah, quem sabe no remake, né? Vamos ver, vamos torcer. E3 overall was amazing. The press conference was in a very different venue. They usually have them like these big auditoriums. Ah, essa foi a E3 que teve o cara tocando a flauta japonesa lá do Ghost of Tsushima Cachorro. Foi a última, né? Foi a última E3. Despedida da E3. They built the whole crazy church thing, which was pretty rad. It was super cool. It was better than Mal sabíamos nós. Mal sabíamos nós que era a última E3, gente. É, foi o Ken Reeves também, né? Pô, deu uma bad aqui agora. Deu um negócio ruim. Foda. E você pode sentir a tensão das pessoas tentando entender o que é essa conferência de prensa, o que está acontecendo, que jogo eles vão mostrar aqui. Então, essa daí é de 2019. A de 2018 foi a do... Não foi isso. Essa foi a última, né? É isso. On the Naughty Dog logo, you get this big cheer. On the LA Reveal, you get this big cheer. Ah, então desculpa. Então não foi a última E3, não. Qual que foi a última E3? Foda-se essa, então. Caguei pra essa E3. Nem ligo pra ela. Every moment that we've constructed and planned, like, meticulously for... Really, a year now. Eu jurava que era. A última da Sony, a última da Sony. Ah, é verdade, é verdade, é verdade. Foi isso. I'm just a girl, not a threat. I think they should be terrified of me. Olha o narizinho amassando. Amassa o narizinho. Amassa esse narizinho. Uh, amassou o narizinho. The biggest reactions was when the HUD came on. Shit. They looked at that forest and thought, there's no way it can look this good. Like, that's impossible. But when we flash the HUD and be like, yeah, that's it. This is the real game. People are not ready for this. Like, this is gonna fuck you up. Ow. was like tingling the whole time like as soon as it's done playing and i'm like on my phone and it was wild it was wild to see it just everywhere see it on youtube essa daí para quem não para quem não tá ligado essa daí é a atriz da Dina a de óculos it was wild it was wild to see it just everywhere see it on youtube see people commenting on it It was it was a really special moment. I shipped something like as a level designer. 
Foi no currículo. Holy crap, this is the best looking animation I've ever seen. Are you kidding me? We're on the forum. Um pouquinho de mentirada. Um pouquinho de mentirada. I think it's amazing. Someone's like sort of cynically that our stuff was fake. I guess it's kind of a compliment to the animation team for like some of the things. Vamos dizer, 5% fake. 5%, vai. Don't respond, don't respond, don't do anything. Like it's just not professional. I was also a little anxious about it because it's a little fake, <laughs> you know. Fake is an interesting word. There's an argument that okay, he's right. Percent. It's not the final polished game. You can't just play this demo in any way. You have to play it in this very specific way. But before we even show the demo, it's like, let's not put anything in there we feel like we can't do. There was no thing of like, we don't know how we're going to do that. It was just, we literally just don't have it systemic yet. You know, like systemically, a guy pulling you out from underneath a car, we didn't have that hooked up yet. <laughs> Now we have it hooked up in the game. It's hurt! Arthur! All over scene. É levemente menos cinematográfico, tá vendo? Ultimately, é. as we're going to the game, if anything é. feels like it's not the right call for the game, we like Joel picks up a pistol and takes up individual bullets from it and then pockets it. And like we could have done that, it just took too long. So for gameplay purposes, we cut that out. I was talking to other animators and they were like, "Yeah, man, they think it's fake. They have no idea. Like it's awesome." The same animators who made this demo are going to make the final game. So like, I don't know what you're talking about. They were confident, which I'm glad. We knew what we were doing and we knew how special it was. It was a little bit of a microphone drop to the industry. And for many, it was inspirational and they were excited to uh, be able to add some of those details to their games and their future games. And for some of them, it absolutely freaked them out to see this cadê o, cadê o Dodge no carro? expected for uh, other games. Cadê o Dodge no carro? Ah, isso aí é mentira. Isso aí não acontece não. Part of me is like, oh shit, like they're fucking calling us out. It's like we have to deliver this. Like we always were gonna, but now it's like people have called us out, so we have to do a full body throw animation when you pick up a bottle and you're running, and not just a partial animation because that guy fucking called us out. <laughs> The real challenge is making the whole game look as good as this one controlled situation. We come out of E3 and, and hopefully we've o set the carro, standard for this what the rest of the game. I didn't see anyone trying to do it, but I've played this game, I don't know, 400 times. It uh, never happened with me. You already know exactly what you're supposed to do in the game. You already know exactly what you're supposed to do in the game. It's hard to have assim, a não. true experience with it. They have to bring in people from the outside. Oh, to play oh, peraí, it. calma aí, calma aí, calma aí, vocês viram isso aqui? Assistindo Best of the Worst aqui? Porra! Aí eu vi vantagem demais. Best of the Worst enquanto você trabalha em, 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 em The Last of Us, porra! Muito forte. Experience with it. They have to bring in people from the outside to play it fresh. And so we try to start playtesting as early as possible. We've got testers in bright and early. They're going to start playing the game. They're actually just right across the hall over here. It is a fire drill. because things have to work. Okay, nun can ask someone. So I'm currently watching the 10 people that we have in at the moment focus testing. We've got all of their screens up um, so I can kind of watch all of them at the same time, generally keep track of any kind of recurring patterns or how long people generally take in certain areas. They do things 
we haven't thought of. And it really shows us where our holes are. It's like, hmm, maybe I should change this. Maybe I should try that. This player's pretty lost, trying to figure out this puzzle here, and they're trying to jump on a truck. He's got a really awesome solution here where he's putting this plank on a dumpster, and now he's moving the dumpster around. So we'll probably have to go in there and like try and fix some of that stuff up, but we'd rather figure that out now. Tinha que ter o que implementado a solução que ele pensou de colocar o tábua em cima do do lixão. For things like puzzles like this one, that although they're figuring out the puzzle, they're actually not doing it in the kind of order that I'd like. What would be better is if they came into the space and realized, okay, that's the thing I need to be um, like climbing up to or getting to, and then they can kind of work backwards from there and go, well, if I need to get there, how do I get up? Oh, I can get up from this thing. It's quite heartbreaking when you see people who are like really confused or don't get it, and it's something you think like it should be obvious, but it's not at all. But it's good data. Peraí, o que ele deu? Eu me perdi. Eu tava pensando em como é legal ver esse tipo de coisa. Like it should be obvious, but it's not at all. Não mais que. Ok. We've had a few people on the team that have been really passionate about making our games even more accessible for people with different kinds of disabilities. Que tá no controle é isso daí é condições de trabalho precárias. Tem que digitar no controle. Accessibility is something that like really touches a lot of people. As we get older, pretty much all of us are going to have probably some sort of accessibility need. It's important to welcome people with disabilities into all of our public spaces, into our shared culture. Video games are a rich part of that. I, I love this that you don't have to have like a two button feature to keep her crouched down. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is awesome. I love that. Nice. Brandon Cole, he said, I, I heard you announce this game. What do you think about the possibility of someone like myself being able to play it? And Brandon is blind. I hadn't really thought about that before. I, I don't even know if that's even possible, but I want to try because that sounds interesting. If you click on the L3 button, it turns the screen and the character towards your um, next, next objective. Uh -huh. So you're able to sort of mm. instantly sort of flip. To I was very much inspired by the, uh, the talk you gave last time you were here. I figured, so I figured. Hopefully that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. We had this feature that let you navigate along the golden path. And we also had this other feature you could like put out this sonar pulse and you'd hear where all the items and enemies were located. Oh, isso daí é, é, eu... Tirando a primeira vez que eu joguei The Last of Us 2, todas as outras foi com esse sistema de sonar. Para localizar item. Muito bom. But Brandon Muito was playing foda. that and was like, this navigation feature is great, but I don't want to just follow the golden path. I want to navigate to other things. It kind of occurred to us, like, oh, we can combine these two features. We can let you scan for items and then navigate to that item. This gives you more room if you do it this way for different types of sounds for different types of items. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Different awesome. sound for ammo, different sound for parts, different sound for explosive, different sound for keys. Or you, uh, craftable yes. and collectible. Yes. Yes, exactly. Right on. But since we want to hunt for secrets, just like anyone else, you're also going to be able to want to know that, hey, there's something way over there. Players with disabilities still want to have challenge. It's not about just making an easy mode. Mm -hmm. So what happened there was an auto Ooh. vault. So you into a wall and it automatically nice. vaulted. I feel happy about this. This is an example of actually the good part of the studio culture, which is self-empowered, that, that I think allowed us to do this crazy thing, this thing that, you know, I couldn't tell you if it makes business sense to some degree, but, but it was something we were passionate about and interested in. It was a way we saw we could make the game better. It was something we saw we could like push the frontiers of, and we went with it. Studio leadership was supportive of us, but this really was like a bottom-up kind of initiative. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that early success um, really helped to build momentum for the rest of the project. Shielding everybody from the cost, from the budget of these decisions helps them focus on their discipline. Don't worry about money, worry about making the best game possible. Trust that there are people at the top that are looking at the budget and considering that. At a certain point in the project, we start offering dinners to the team. Ah, assim começa. And it's kind of like an acknowledgement of like, okay, there's a lot of hard work to get it done. Hoje vai ter pizza, galera. 
and we know people are probably going to want to be staying late. Now we are crunching. Mas quer traduzir um crunching? Peraí. Now we are crunching. Fazendo hora extra. This is crunch. I must have felt it for months that this release date is not realistic with how big the game is. People were asking us, is this a real date? Because it's not feeling like a real date anymore. So we felt like we had to react pretty soon. And then at some point it just felt like because people were starting to put in longer hours, it wouldn't have been fair to not figure this stuff out sooner than later. Pois é, uh, okay. e, em 26 idiomas. Incrível, realmente. Parabéns. Because people were starting to put in longer hours, it wouldn't have been fair to not figure this stuff out sooner than later. We're never gonna finish this game. If you work hard for longer, that could have a toll on you. We tell everybody, pace yourselves. It's like it's, it's, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. We settled on a February release date. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Leave some gas in the tank. Right now we are dancing a very intricate and dangerous dance. We have something like six months left to finish the game. Uh, and we are also showing a demo to the press. The longest playable demo we've ever done. Two separate levels of the game. A level towards the beginning of the game where you play with Dina on patrol outside of Jackson. And then the second part of the demo is in a level super duper challenging. Ah, tá. Lembrei. Eu tava. Nossa, não lembro desse preview. Ah, lembrei. Lembrei, lembrei. So what we're doing for the press in nine weeks is really those two levels of the game. It's unlikely that we're going to need to touch... Que foi, que foi na época que eles lançaram o trailer mentiroso que termina com o Joe aparecendo. By herself, murder mode. So, what we're doing for the press in nine weeks de cachorro também. is really those two levels of the game. It's unlikely that we're going to need to touch them again por, the por nome. That was really the only kind of demo that we could do at this point that would still help further our production goals as well as give us this like marketing boost that, that we need. Yeah. The more we talked about, it, the more we convinced ourselves, okay, this would actually be a good time to just put up a trailer. Building these two major demos and a trailer next to the rest of the fucking game. And it felt impossible early on. And it's the thing that's always hard for us to polish. You review these things and we're looking at all these tiny details. It's like, even that shot of Jackson is like, where should the trees be? How much fog should it be? How much sun should it be? How should the sun hit the clouds? How we get all these civilians, the kids, do they have the proper gear? Are they wearing the right clothes? Uh, is the tractor leaving That's tracks cool. on the ground? That kind of crazy detail can only come through all these departments coming together and rising this occasion to achieve that kind of level of quality. Pô, não é possível que esse foi o bloco de crunch. Tipo, aconteceu. A gente falou, cuidado. Mas aconteceu. Tá aí, né? I wanted to show the team the final trailer. Before we show you the trailer, just to say thank you to everyone, where we jumped from doing a three hour demo to this trailer where we had almost nothing. And it's like a pretty amazing what we can do when we all come together. In fact, it's so amazing you can forget. And I've been here for a long time and I can forget. So to remind you and maybe reignite some of that panic, uh, we're going to show you two trailers. One from exactly a month ago and one from about an hour ago when we wrapped up the trailer. So enjoy. <laughs> Decided to join us. <laughs> Alright, you all know the drill. Dino, where are you? obrigado a rejogar da Last of Us 2, né? You think I'd let you do this on your own? A mentirada. 
Olha lá, o nome é... <risos> Show has Joe Reunite Lie. Cinematic. O mentira tava no... No nome. É, né? Visito. Fica muito esquisito mesmo, tipo... Pronto, porém, magia. Ah, gente. É o custo necessário para se fazer um jogo tão mágico. So when you look at parts of the game that aren't there yet, know that we can get there in a pretty short period of time when we're so focused. Aí é que eu falo que agora, por exemplo, aquela cena da, da discussão lá da do adiamento da, da demo, né, que que te, mostrou reunião lá e tudo mais, agora me parece algo algo mais selecionado assim, sabe? Tipo, não não tão sincero mais porque é... Né? Tá, todo, tá todo bem, bem positivo no, 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 no... Tipo, ah, te, teve umas coisinhas aqui Mas gente, no fundo, todo mundo Todo mundo é, a gente é uma grande família Deu tudo certo, gente No final é a mágica É, o, é a mágica que precisa ser, acontecer The date was the scariest part of the whole. <laughs> We got the trailer done. We'll talk right. to you. Não necessariamente, Amorina. As pessoas que estão com a cara borrada, pessoas que saíram da empresa. Não necessariamente que. Ou, ou que. É, não responderam o e-mail para ceder imagem, ou que não quiseram, mas não necessariamente. Ou tímidas. Né? Se alguém me desse a opção, você quer que a gente borre no documentário? Sim. Exato, né? Ou talvez é assim que elas são na vida real, né? A gente tá sendo, gente tá sendo borrão-fóbico aqui. Every September 26, we've done something for Last of Us fans. When people play these two sections, which are very different, I hope and I feel that both of them are equally impressive. <risos> When you play that first demo, you're like, that was incredible. Maçonha. Oh my God. This could have been the whole demo. This could have been the whole thing. It says enough about what the game is. And then you play the other half, and it's like, way more. Só dá maçonha pro jovem que o jovem transa. É um perigo a maçonha, gente. Cuidado. In the highest level of how Naughty Dog is perceived as a company, it's that we're story first and mechanics second. A lot of it is, I think, proving to the press and proving to people that yes, we can do both. I, I want people to walk around and say, this is the best controlling, this is the best feeling third person shooter. It's on the level of the best action stealth games you've ever played. Hey. So one of the things that I've always found really exciting about The Last of Us is the kind of fidelity with which we represent human intelligence. One of the ways that really helped make them feel more human and more alive was the way that they use their body language to communicate to each other. Everybody spread out. We may have multiples. We had a number of sessions where the animation team, design team, and programmers all got together and we acted out a number of scenarios. And what that does is it gives us really great reference and touch points that we can always look back to about the way that we naturally behave, the way we naturally respond to each other. And those are the types of details that we want to weave back into the game. Someone took out Zoe! Who the fuck's out there? Sweep the whole goddamn street. 
Our NPCs are named so that you understand these people have relationships. They want to get revenge on you. It's this little, little mini loop of the whole premise of the game. Omar! Flanker! I just killed their friend and they want to kill me now. There's a cost. Bacana. You killed that person. His friend now feels a loss. You know, his dog is now alone. Cachorro. Cachorro fica triste, gente. Muito triste, cachorro triste. Dogs yeah. are really difficult to start off with because they're quadrupeds. They just don't turn around. They kind of like wheel around a little bit. Smell something, girl? The main concern we had Queria... is how... Queria reiterar aqui que da primeira vez que eu joguei não matei nenhum cachorro, exceto que a cutscene te obriga. Hein? Queria dizer que... Olha os cachorros de roupinha! Ah, meu Deus, o cachorro de roupinha. Is it that we can actually get a dog to perform a dance card? Ele é o melhor ator. Por que não contrataram esse cachorro para fazer o o coringa de guitarra do Death Strange em vez do Troy Baker? Olha como ele é perfeito. Olha como ele sabe fazer tudo direitinho. Ah. They move extremely quickly, uh, so they're super hard to shoot. Right in here! Uh, oh, fuck! <laughs> they are very low to the ground. You have like these attacks that are designed to go up here, <laughs> and now you have to kind of do them down there. Não faz isso, não. Não era para fazer isso. Killing a dog has gotten people more like upset than anything else in the game, than hanging people, than eviscerating people. We're gonna break new ground in dog murder. É que o ser humano, assim como o macaco, ele nasce com a maldade, né? O cachorro não. Cachorro de roupinha. So we killed it. And then you have to love it knowing that it's already dead. So there's gonna probably be people that are upset about that. Hey Al, you wanna go to the trucks? Let's go to the trucks. With the notable exception of Alice, we took great pains to ensure that every combat encounter that you fight against a dog, uh, you do not have to kill any of them. Uh, it's more palatable to kill people because they're all there because they choose to be there. Uh, but all of these dogs were trained to do this exact thing, uh, and so you're killing an innocent creature. Cara, precisava. Precisava de colocar isso no documentário. That feeling of discomfort is exactly what we're trying to explore with with the Last of Us. Ironically, making them more realistic makes people feel more okay about killing them. We had like kind of a goofy art prototype. We had like a, just a very rough dog. We found that that goofy dog that had no fur, <laughs> people felt really bad about killing that dog. Like when you would shoot them, they would fall over dead and like give one last whine as their like dying breath and stuff. So uh, we just really tried to like tone down the pity ability of, of all the dogs and stuff. <laughs> Tá recitando o diálogo que ele decorou. The best sound in most games are the stuff you don't notice. The foley in the game is extremely detailed. Things like foley are very easy to get wrong and noticed for the wrong reason. Very difficult to get right, but when you get it right, no one's going to pat you on the back for it. Hmm. Audio guys are kind of a different breed. We listen to everything all the time. It's kind of a curse. Our ability to use pre-recorded assets from a library that's like commercially available has been diminished uh, almost entirely because we we have very specific needs. Do you want more of those? We're trying to take what we did in the first game and bring it to another level of detail. Isso daí da pessoa fazendo o barulho do clique já tinha sido mostrado no primeiro documentário, é muito impressionante yeah, like mesmo. Like with that a little bit, like mixing that tonality in is cool. Yeah, yeah. The enemies themselves, especially the infected, have had to go through a review process. In the first game they're pretty coarse. They're basically like on or off. They're either walking around mumbling. 
or they're freaking out trying to get you. And so now we've we've developed sort of this like murmuration breath system that allows them to have a much more natural flow between being agitated and not. E dá um nervosinho, porque às vezes você acha que ele te notou, aí você fica agressivo e na verdade ele. Aí, tipo, agora. Você acha que ele te notou, aí você. Opa, eita, pô. Aí você fica tenso. É legal. É legal. A big part of those recording sessions is, is working with the voice actors. It's much more collaborative. <risos> yeah, that's cool. Um, I, I kind of want to see what your more natural voice sounds like. You're basically trying to coach people that they're not zombies. <laughs> yeah, now imagine, now imagine sprinting. Look. <laughs> right, I got a crack. No, that's oh, yeah, cool, dude. man. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, take your time, man. That's, that's, that's great. really great. One of the folks that we worked with, the sounds he was able to generate from himself was unlike anything I've ever heard before. Well, there's gente que nasce com com talento, né? Gnarly sounding roars and breaths and wheezes and really interesting stuff that I've never heard come out of a person ever. Tinha que chamar o homem gato do Faustão. No 3, se não chamarem o homem gato do Faustão, vai refazer todos. And we have to be as prepared as possible, and that's what we try to do. A lot of stuff is yet to come for us. Which means there's not a lot of time left. Which means that it's going to get really intense. It gets really intense for everybody, but for audio in particular, um, we'll be here late. Bom, pelo menos, Rafael, é a ator assim tem tem sindicato e é mais é mais direitinho. E Crunch 2. Vamos ver se vem a redenção. I can't put everything I have into um, these games as much as I was able to when I first got here. It's pretty unanimous that this this game is really big. Where it's bigger than we'd like it to be. The Last of Us Part 1 is small compared to this game. My argument, make the game small again. I don't even call them small. There this is already great. You don't need to do the next thing. I feel like at any given point, you'll go into the kitchen and you'll find people, what I would say, saloning about the game, like going deep philosophy into what's working, what isn't. People criticizing this or that. This doesn't look good. I don't like this scene. This doesn't work for me. I hate this. You know, like they're going to lunch and like expressing. Eu discordo, Isidro. Eu acho que o jogo ele é do tamanho que ele deveria ser. Eu acho que é importante que você esteja cansado dele no final. Eu, eu realmente defendo esse, esse lado de que quando você acha que ele vai acabar, ele tem mais um bocado e você tá exausto no final dele, eu acho que é importante pra, pra experiência. Mas talvez desse pra gerar esse mesmo efeito sem um jogo tão longo, né? E que fosse mais fácil de ser feito. Ou que ele fosse da mesma duração, mas que eles é... Né, gerenciar sem melhor o projeto pra não precisar de crunch. Porque o problema não é o jogo ser longo. Tipo, se, se o jogo for longo, mas produzido num tempo suficiente pra ninguém precisar fazer crunch, não tem problema. Né? É... Eu, né, tipo, eu acho que se o jogo fosse mais curto, mais mal gerenciado, teria crunch igual. Né? Se fosse Bloodborne Like, por exemplo. Sing that to each other and like, is this gonna come together? Is this the one that like screws Naughty Dog up? Let me just exude whatever confidence I have left. Let me try to bestow this person with it so they can feel inspired and go off and do their work. But then sometimes you're alone in the office and you're like, 
what if this doesn't come together? What if this is the one that sucks? What if this is the one that, that sinks Naughty Dog? So then you have to like kind of bury it, compartmentalize it. Who knows what damage it does to your body while you're doing that? Because ultimately, you can't let that fear dictate how you work and just keep the faith. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, caralho, eu fico muito triste com o jeito que eles estão tratando a, a parada do Crunch. Porque, tipo, eles colocam como se fosse assim... Ah, as pessoas não sabem, né, gerenciar o trabalho e a vida, né? E eu, eu, eu decidi por conta própria que eu queria fazer o Crunch. Porque eu, eu não queria deixar isso pra ninguém. E mesmo quando eu estou na cozinha, no trabalho, todo mundo está conversando sobre o trabalho. Então, é, é as pessoas que decidiram. A Naughty Dog não tem culpa disso. Mas, tipo... Não é uma decisão individual. Claro que tem pessoas que, que, que vão fazer... Por exemplo, o lance que eles estavam falando lá da parada de acessibilidade começou com alguém fazendo por conta própria, assim, sabe? Tipo, não tava no... no na, na lista de tarefas é, previstas pro jogo. E, pô, que legal que alguém conseguiu começar esse projeto por conta própria, chamar a atenção da empresa e virou uma feature muito importante no jogo. Né? Talvez isso não teria acontecido se não tivesse... Se a pessoa fosse completamente proibida de trabalhar fora das horas é, é, né, necessárias. Mas, tipo... É um problema é, institucional, sabe? Tipo, é, é uma cultura essa parada. Tipo, não, é, não dá pra colocar, tipo, na decisão pessoal de cada um. É, e aí, ah, são as pessoas, gente... As pessoas que, que querem. E aí, tipo, não queria que, que o documentário mostrasse o podre ou que falar, mostrasse como que eles estão resolvendo isso, porque, né, fora do escopo até do documentário, mas queria que eles falassem, que eles pelo menos reconhecessem que é um problema, sabe? Que, que, é, que é realmente institucional, que existe. Que aí fica foda realmente de acreditar que eles sequer entendem o que que tá errado, assim. Uh... A gente foi um pouquinho Tentando achar o começo de uma conversa Suvaco cheiroso, ok Não, assim Eu, 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 não, eu falo, falo que ah, Pode ter certeza que o Neil Druckmann não fez crunch Igual aos outros Não tenho certeza também, tipo, ele parece o tipo de pessoa é, Workaholic pra caralho Que... que... E, 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 mas o foda é que é irrelevante É irrelevante se ele fez ou não Porque ele é o porra do presidente Atualmente ele é o presidente da empresa Ele tem muito mais a ganhar se o projeto For bem, né Se ele, se ele fizer crunch, ele ganha muito mais Se ele fizer crunch, isso afeta positivamente o, o, o trabalho, por conta de um planejamento ruim Ele ganha muito mais do que o, Os outros, é exato, ele é o maior interessado No crunch, né, então tipo Pra, pra ele É interessante fazer crunch para as outras pessoas não, né? É, ele, ele, ele me dá essa vibe de que faria crunch, de que viraria noite na empresa. Não duvido, não duvido, mas isso é irrelevante. Não, não... E, e, na verdade, é, é pior, na verdade, se ele tiver feito, porque aí ele, o exemplo tá vindo de cima, né? Tipo, porra, se o cara que é o presidente da empresa agora, né? O diretor do projeto tá ficando, quem sou eu pra voltar pra casa? Né? É... Enfim. Talvez eles voltem nesse assunto de novo, vamos esperar pra ver. Peraí que tava escrito ali mesmo Covid, beleza Ah, em 2023, agora o conteúdo parou de filmar Ali, e agora o conteúdo Em 2023 The game was just about done. It was content complete. We were... Isso daí também eu discordo, Diego Lúcio. O diretor fica, mas não tem o trampo exaustivo. O cargo do Neil Druckmann é, é bem envolvido em todos os aspectos. Ele é escritor também. Ele, ele trabalha como game designer também, né? Então, assim, é, é bastante coisa, né? Mas eu acho que o ponto não é esse. Acho que ele não, ele não é só um CEO, assim, pelo menos durante a produção do The Last of Us 2. O jogo estava só feito. Foi o conteúdo completo. Nós estávamos fixando bugs quando... 
there's these like rumblings of this pandemic happening. <laughs> like I remember when this COVID shit hit and we're like, bro, really? Like for real pandemic? You know, at first it feels like, oh, it's this is nothing we need to worry about. And then all of a sudden you do have to worry about it. And it's like, are people going to want to play a game that takes place in a pandemic when there's a real pandemic? We had never worked from oh, home. Eu vi, ever. eu vi. Like, eu vi esse, esse dev kit pessoalmente em Play 5. O que tem um espaço para você colocar uma pizza aqui dentro, uma fatia de pizza. Esse que falta no PS5. Um espaço para você colocar uma fatia de pizza enquanto você está jogando. Naito was actually strictly against working from home. We did not have the infrastructure set up at this studio to work from home. And it's because we were so intense about security and leaks that all of our data, including our emails and our chats and IMs, it all had to be on a server inside the building. Nossa, olha quanto HD. We were like air gapped from the outside world. Nossa. The operations team, the IT team, our engineering team, they all had to coordinate in a very short period of time to get us working from home. We don't even know when the game can come out. Sony was like, we don't know if we can physically ship this product with like the supply chain and stuff. We had to come out and say, the game can come out on this date and we don't even know when it will come out. It's delayed indefinitely. So a lot of our most hardcore fans are angry Pô, with us. Adiaram o, o Homem de Ferro VR. Aí é triste demais. Puta que pariu. Around the same exact time, we started having these leaks. We're like, we didn't put out this video. Saiu, saiu. Like, where is this coming from? <laughs> it's a video from one of our reviews. So you could hear the notes and um, people that can't attend the meeting can watch it after the fact. We store all these videos on our server. Did it come from the inside? Someone with a naughty dog? My first thought was, this isn't like a developer leaking this, isn't it? This isn't someone on the team. It's this person in the Netherlands downloaded terabytes of videos through a back door in the server. And then this is where we made a fatal error. Let's close this back door. And then this person put out everything. A video goes up on YouTube, and I don't remember what the first video was, but it was something relatively benign. But they weren't like super important scenes, you know, they were like little clips, and it was like, okay, that's a little weird, what, what is that? All out of order and stuff, and I was like, oh, oh, that's bad. And you kind of wanted to just say, stop, 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 wait, 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 don't, don't, don't watch it, like, you're gonna ruin things for yourself. There's YouTubers I've watched for, for years, and they're making entire videos, and the title is like, fuck Naughty Dog and fuck The Last of Us Part Two. There's just all this negativity and no positivity because no one has played the game. They just have these videos out of context and all these rumors mixed with them. Abby is playable. They thought Abby was trans because she has muscles. Here's D. These rumors mixed with them. <laughs> Them, Abby is playable. They thought Abby was trans because she has muscles. Here's the ending of they kill Ellie. And then it just turns the whole political thing. Oh, no, dogs, oh, they're doing this political shit. And then I get this text from Evan. They just posted Joel's death. And my heart sinks. I can't even describe this feeling. It's just this like dread. It's almost like you just heard someone you care about died. I don't know. That's the closest I could, I could come to. I thought Choi would be looking at that and be like, you see? You see, you were wrong. He said, do you think we did the right thing? And I said, I don't know, Neil. I haven't played the game yet. I was livid. I was, I was real angry. I'm bombarded with hundreds of negative comments, death threats, anti-Semitic comments. It's putting me in a deep depression. There's some stupid stuff that's like, you're a feminazi, you're whatever shit like that. But it's like some stuff was really like, you know, disturbing. The hatred, I think, that was behind it. I was sad. Like, there were a lot of days where I would just cry. Every time I went online, it was just, that's all I saw was death threats and threats of violence and 
the worst of it, the really like hardcore death threats got passed along and um, they, you know, made sure that they weren't anyone that like lived close by. <laughs> um, yeah, they were like threatening my son, you know, who was born during all of it. And you know, it was rough. It was rough. But uh, you know, more than anything, it just kind of like, it kind of like taught me to kind of keep a distance, you know? know. This thing that I spent four and a half years on, it's kind of getting violated. And then for two months before release, there's like nothing you can do. You can't release the game sooner because it's not done yet. And that was the lowest point in my life. <laughs> I'm working on the game towards the end at home by myself, feeling very alone. And I said, who am I doing this for? Like, why am I, why, this is, it's too much. And I barely squeaked by. And then we were able to finish it. And, you know, we sent it to reviewers and reviews are through the roof. called Troy and I said like dude I'm sorry I feel like I, I failed you and uh, and he's like what are you talking about and I'm like yeah I just know how some people talk it's like oh dude I don't care I played the game and I love it and I got really emotional it's like I, I realized how much I care about Troy caring about the game and that that was a huge sense of relief there's not a single aspect of the game part two that I would change and anytime someone comes up to me and says you know I didn't really like what they did to Joel. I was like, great, awesome. Tell me a better version of the story. And to this day, they still can't. It was a traumatic experience for myself and many people on, on the team. And the kind of hate we got because of those leaks will stay with me forever. And I can't even describe how angry I was of what the damage this person did to us. I want them punished in every sort of way. I wanted this to be this really, this villain. And this person is like, you know, in their 20s or whatever, they live with their parents, and it's a fan. And then when we delayed the game indefinitely, that's, this is what they said, is like, I wanted to force Naughty Dog's hand. I wanted to force them to release the game. So I thought if I just put out all the videos, eventually they'll put out the game, which again was never an option for us. And I remember Não, saying there... tem que atualizar o ditado do Miyamoto, que é um jogo é, lançado rápido, pode ter problemas, um jogo adiado, é, pode ser vazado por alguém que queria muito jogar antes. Sitting in my anger, and then go like slowing down and just saying, okay, if anybody should take the lesson from Last of Us Part Two, it should probably be us. Just let it go. better to play future days for the Game Awards. I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan. Really? Yeah, I know. So shocking to many people. What a fascinating way to tell a story. It's just getting better and better all the time. And I really appreciate the way that future days was used, um, especially bringing Joel and Ellie together, uh, connecting through music. 
it was cool to be part of it. So uh, thanks for having me and enjoy the rest of the show. How lucky am I? Like, how cool is this? This person that I've admired since I was a kid is now like mentioning this game that we all made. And then we started winning award after award after award. I wanted that validation for the team. Everyone at Naughty Dog, I, I can't wait to hug and high five and get drunk with each one of you. Um, that's gonna have to wait till next year. And more than anything, and I know that I speak for the whole team when I say this, We'd like to thank our friends and family that stood by us and support us throughout uh, us making this game. You inspire us not only to make better, more meaningful games, um, but to improve how we make games. The pandemic kind of brought up that question of like health and mental health. Are we developers that are going to stay at the studio and have full uh, careers. How well, do we the dog make acabou in 2014. I, like, I chuckle in retrospect just how absurd the failure of trying to alleviate crunch was. If you have great processes and you're super organized, that doesn't fix crunch. What that does is it allows you to make a bigger game. We read the post-mortem feedback for The Last of Us 2, and it was really, really upsetting to see what co-workers had gone through. So we were highly motivated to try to figure out how to fix it. Everything about our workflows were already being upended with remote work and everything. So it's like, okay, well, yeah, this is, we got to do this now. And we knew that to make the real changes we did, it would take the entire studio working together. We now have the goal for Nidoc to eliminate crunch. The only thing that fixes crunch, the only thing is just deciding that you're not going to crunch. Uh, when we onboard people, we tell them, you know, we have a reputation as a studio for crunching, and it's something we don't want. And it's something we're not going to do anymore. First, we had to do, what is crunch? Let's let's define it. Because th when you just look at hours, that, that turn out to be too simplistic. It's a multitude of factors. It's not just like one thing. It's not just, oh, because of this, this is what's causing crunch. It's literally like so many of these little things. How do we mm -hmm. get, make sure no one at Naughty Dog burns out? You know, every couple of months, we send out a, a, a 90 second questionnaire that goes, are you worried about your workload? Are you worried about having to work overtime? If you feel like I'm overburdened with work, you have to tell somebody. We used to, as a studio, when we were getting close to shipping a game, bring in dinners for the whole studio. No, Mario, eles nunca tinham nunca tinham falado desse jeito não. We don't do crunch dinners anymore. Tipo, se você começar, se você pensar que esse papo de crunch, na verdade, a primeira vez que eu lembro de dele ter sido coberto pela grande mídia para valer mesmo foi na época do Battlefield 3, que teve o lance das esposas da EA lá e tal. É... Isso foi o que? 2000... 2009? Então tem tipo. É, na época. É, vamos dizer que foi por ali. Um pouco no começo dos 2010, né? É... Em relação a Naughty Dog, o primeiro jogo deles que teve discussão sobre o Crunch foi o Uncharted 4. É. Na época do Last of Us 1 não teve essa discussão, na época do... Pelo menos não que eu me lembre. E, e aí no Uncharted 4 teve bastante. E aí agora no, no, no Part 2 teve bastante também. Então eles, eles nunca... Eles nunca tinham falado sobre isso, não. From home, um, it's hugely helpful for me, for my mental health, of like, you know, my daughter's there, my, my wife is there. Hybrid is, is really the sweet spot because I think the benefits have just been enormous. In the past, our leads, our managers, were the people that were best at their craft, but not necessarily the best managers. So we created the role of principal. We really gave people the choice, like, do you want to make stuff or do you want to lead and manage? And Arnaldo is now a lead designer here. I know, existir crunch sempre existiu, né? Mas as pessoas não falavam sobre, ou pelo menos, uh, 
A mídia não cobria. Now I'm responsible for a team, and I really enjoy that, and being able to share that knowledge and kind of work with someone, even if they're more experienced than me, and it's been great so far. We have a very large and robust production department now that we, we didn't have. Holding us accountable when we make a decision, when it's just everyone going, yes, more, yes, better, yes, polish, polish, polish. Um, Tallying that up and going, okay, well, this is the result. Now you're not in your ship date anymore. It feels so much like a different studio. I hope that we can keep changing for the better and make sure that we're making the games that we want to make, that we're really passionate about, that we don't stop doing that. We want self-driven, healthy designers. Yes, we, we exactly. want to have it all. We want to have it both. And, and can we do that? That'll, that'll be the question, I guess. Ok, e no fim das contas eles falaram o que eu gostaria de, de ter ouvido eles falando em relação a Crunch. Tipo, foi um papo de quem, pelo menos, né, entende de onde vem o que que gera, né? É, teve ali uma, um reconhecimento que é, uma, é um problema sistemático, que, que não é uma coisa só, né? É um monte de pequenas coisas de uma cultura de estúdio, que o jeito de mudar isso é mudar na cultura do estúdio. Então, quando ele fala que eles estão contratando pessoas já... Com, tentando ter essa mentalidade, né? Que não é questão só de, de horas, exatamente, né? É... Agora, o lance é... E, e aí, é o, por exemplo, né? Tipo, é essa, essa, essas mudanças, vamos dizer que elas começaram a ser implementadas depois que o, que o The Last of Us Part 2 saiu. Então, agora, três anos depois, já, já se precisa ver essa mudança tendo surtido algum efeito, né? E aí, quando você vê o, o Kurt falando ali que que pare... pra ele parece um estúdio diferente e tudo mais, isso é animador. Mas, por exemplo, agora que esse documentário saiu, é uma boa, uma ótima oportunidade, um ótimo momento pra fontes anônimas de um Jason Schreier, por exemplo, falar, olha, não mudou nada, não. Ainda tem crunch. E eu acho que se tiver, a gente vai, a gente vai ouvir, sabe? É... A gente vai ficar sabendo, porque, né, querer mudar, né, muitos estúdios acho que tentam, né, é... Agora eu acho que a gente vai, vai ver nesse próximo projeto aí, é, seja lá qual for, né, até o final dele, a gente vai ouvir notícias, eu imagino que de um lado ou de outro, assim. Fico feliz, por exemplo, também com esse papo de que eles estão, eles adotaram o híbrido, assim, né, porque tem muitos estúdios que, que viram a vantagem, tem outros que estão exigindo o retorno aos escritórios, como que isso tem sido difícil, né? Especialmente para estudos que se expandiram e, e na época da pandemia pessoas saíram de centros mais caros, tipo São Francisco, cidades tipo Los Angeles. Naughty Dog é o quê? Santa Mônica? Não, não sei onde Naughty Dog fica. É... Isso é legal também, né? Mas eu acho que a gente só vai saber mais perto de quando o próximo projeto deles saírem. The HBO's thing has been a wild ride. Oh, I'm Olá, I just wanted it to be like good. Like, dude, if it just comes out and it's a good show, like that's that's going to be huge. Agora, é interessante porque a gente agora vai ter a segunda temporada, né? É, e vai ser uma oportunidade, quer dizer, vai ser uma oportunidade de, de ver um novo público engajando com a parte polêmica né, da história de, de The Last of Us. Eu fico curioso para saber se vai ser ainda mais mal recebido que no jogo, ou um pouco melhor, por não, por, pelo público não ser gamer. A gente vai descobrir se é o gamer que é, que é difícil de lidar. Ou se é uma história que vai, vai ser mal, mal recebida. E, e se ela foi tão mal recebida por conta do vazamento também, com certeza teve, né? Mas aí vai ser interessante pra gente ver o quanto que o vazamento teve de papel nessa, no fato da história ser tão mal recebida assim, né? É, ou pelo menos o tão mal recebida que foi, né? Então, curioso. É, então, o pessoal ama o Pedro Pascal, né? Exato. I'm sure it will be very different when I actually see Abby 
being portrayed? That will be so weird. I can't imagine what Ashley and Troy must be feeling. Specifically because Ellie is a part of my heart. In some ways, it was really hard. I feel like Bella was the only person who could play her because I feel like she is Ellie. There's a part of me that's like weirdly protective of her. I remember when Neil told me, like, we found Joel. I was like, he wasn't missing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he goes, Pedro Pascal. And I went, oh, we're bulletproof. It felt like Craig and Neil together saw that this was a, a story about humanity, and they made it a story about humanity. We got Frank. Who knew that was waiting? Craig's screaming from the sidelines going, I did. When Neil and Craig asked me to play Ellie's mother, Anna, um, uh -huh. it made me so happy. And I'm crying, so it doesn't seem like it, but it was symbolic in so many ways to me. Being able to sort of bring Ellie into the world, be the first one to fight for her. <laughs> it breaks my heart. It felt like on the other side, we could get this story to people that will never play a video game. My mom is watching the show and like, she can enjoy this story and she can be a part of it. And she's so excited and working on season two and, and getting to see that. <laughs> I love this idea that someone could watch the show and then realize, wait, that's based on a video game? And come oh, back and check out. Como foi discutido no BBB, é, fizeram um video game baseado na série, né? About the game and then realize, oh, there's like all these rich games, triple A, indie, and all sorts of stories that are really unique to this medium. I did some other interview where someone asked me about The Last of Us and would there be any more stories or something. And I, and I mentioned like, you know, we mm. have written a story that takes place after mm. Last of Us 2. Um, mm. It stars Tommy. Mm. And I hope one day we get to make it. And the headlines across the industry were like, oh, kitty, um, Naughty Dog has outlined Last of Us Part 3. And that's actually wrong. It was, always, it was always a small story. It was never like a full title. At the time, the higher priorities of Naughty Dog was like to fix our pipeline, to fix work-life balance issues. Just based on where we were, I didn't want to prioritize the story, so that story was shelved. And I still believe one day it will see the light of day. I don't know if it's, it'll be a game or a show. TBD. First game had such a clean concept of like the unconditional love a parent feels for their child. The second one, once we landed on this idea of the pursuit of justice at any cost, justice for the ones you love, it felt like, oh, there's a clean concept As here. Da and there's a through line from the first game about love. If we never get to do it again, this is a fine ending point. And right, last bite of the apple, the story's done. The great thing about working at Naughty Dog is that we don't have to. Um, it's always like, we would love another Last of Us, but if you guys feel like we're passionate about something else, we'll support this other thing. Very privileged position to be in. I, I, I never take that for granted. I've been just thinking about, okay, is there a concept there? And for now years, I haven't been able to find that concept. Uh, but recently that's changed. Eita. And um, I don't have a story, but I do have that concept that to me is as exciting as one, as exciting as two, um, is its own thing and yet has this through line for all three. Mm. Uh, so it, it does feel like there's probably one more chapter to this story. Alá. Alá ele. Iha. Aí. É... Confirmado. Confirmado lá essas três. Mas sim, espero. Quer dizer, ó, com certeza não é a próxima coisa que eles estão fazendo, né? Afinal de contas. É... <risos> Gosto que eles colocaram o, o streamer que reagiu. Marlon Gaming Nation nos créditos também. Importante. Já tem data da Last of Us 3? Sim. É Shadow Drop. Acabou de sair. Já tá na loja. É, bora pro documentário de Sacanotes 2 agora. Agora vocês vão ver o que é um documentário de verdade. É, é bacana, bacana. Assim, fiquei feliz que no fim das contas eles falaram sobre o Crunch. É... 
Acho que não da forma mais sincera, mais, não, não vou dizer sincera, né, mas mais crua possível como, como foi no documentário do Double Vine, mas até aí também, né, querer isso de outro documentário é muito, muito, muito complexo. É... Só que eu fico pensando o que que esse documentário vai fazer pela Naughty Dog no momento, assim, porque eu sinto que ele tem uns papos que quem tava com preguiça já da Naughty Dog desde o Last of Us Part 2 vai ter mais preguiça da Naughty Dog. E, no geral, a, as pessoas estão... É, tão quem, até quem não tava com preguiça da Dog tá ficando, né? Por conta do, desses vários é, remasters, re, remakes e é, sionismos, né? Dentre outras coisas aí. E eu não acho que esse documentário vai fazer muito por essas pessoas também, não. Mudar muitas opiniões em relacionada em uh, relação a isso. Vou aquecer... Hum, não vou colocar. Até... Até porque não tem legenda em português, né? Acho que no terceiro deveria ter uma cura? Acho que não. Ah, não sei. Não sei, na verdade, porque eu, eu era do, 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 do grupo que achava que não precisava de uma sequência, né? E aí eles fizeram uma sequência e eu falei, caralho, precisava de uma sequência. É, melhor sequência possível né? Mas Então eu quero ser surpreendido Se ele achar que faz sentido uma cura né? Porque o lance é A cura que eu, eu acho que eu já comentei sobre isso né? A cura no parte 2 Ela não é nem abordada né? tipo, não, tem, não, não faz parte da história a cura, ou a busca por uma cura, ou a ideia de uma cura, ou quem poderia fazer uma cura e tudo mais. Até o finalzinho, quando, porra, Fireflies estão se reunindo de novo, num lugar aqui, tem uns 300 Fireflies aqui, e a gente tá continuando o trabalho dos Fireflies, né? O que me deixa é, pensando, meia cura que é de Capture, esse aí foi, foi mencionado, de fato. É, o que me deixou pensando que é uma parte 3... Na época, né? Quando eu terminei, me deixou pensando que uma parte 3 teria a ver com isso. Porque esse é um aspe o aspecto importante pra história que foi começado no 1 que não foi tocado no 2, né? Então, se, dado o que a gente conhece de Last of Us, se eu fosse chutar, é, a parte 3 seria sobre isso. Agora, se eles vão encontrar uma cura, se eles vão... Sei lá, o que, que vai acontecer, né? Double Fine Technology, mas bom, é, é um documentário imenso, né? Eu não vou colocar na parte 28, sei lá quantas partes tem aquela porra. É, né, e assisti do, do meio. Ah não, quem pegou o já era, não tem como, né? A pessoa teve a cabeça estourada que nem um milho de pipoca. Tem muito o que fazer. É... É, um jogo contar essa história do Joe e do Tommy mais novos, vendo que eles eram por aí. É. Poderia ser interessante? Poderia. Você me fala assim, só esse conceito por si só me anima? Não muito. Mas não duvido que tenha como ser, ser maneiro. Isso. Agora, vou ver se eu consigo ligar o, o console aqui. Hoje já são quase 5 da tarde, né, gente? Foda quando o tempo, o tempo voa, quando estamos nos divertindo. Hum, isso daqui. Marca de captura. Ah. Tocar o, o fone desolvido. joguei nenhum Ethan Odyssey, não. Se passa nos anos Bolsonaro, exato. Ih, Robocop, gente. Não era dessa vez, era Robocop. Eu ia jogar. 
É, ih, não pode ver esse jogo aqui não. Que jogo é esse? Não sei que jogo é esse não. Porra, atualização do The Last of Us? Toma no cu! 10 GB de atualização? É isso, velho. Vou ficar Robocop. É o um documentário, é isso. DLC do Tommy, isso. Shadow Drop. Skins novas. Pô, imagina, se Last of Us 3 tem só 9 GB. Caralho, mas uma atualização de 9 GB? Que porra é essa? Esse jogo já tem tudo que precisava ter. Left Behind 2. O Left Behind agora é outro. É verdade, gente. Fica aí o aviso que... Saiu um dash, né? Mais cedo. Lá pela, pela meio-dia. Que é a nossa segunda parte da, da trilogia de jogos de 2023. E aí nesse a gente fala do tema do ano. A gente fala de jogos que a gente queria ter jogado mais. Nosso jogo favorito de outro ano que a gente jogou em 2023. A gente fala de melhor surpresa, maior decepção... É, melhor história, melhor, melhor jogo mais bonito é, Jogos esquecidos E a gente pontua as previsões de 2023 Spoiler, não fiz muitos pontos E faz as previsões de 2024 Eu também gosto bastante, que outro É, ficou curtinho Ficou curtinho Bom é que dá pra ouvir, né A, a pausa pro almoço, assim Aí já dá aquela escutadinha, já, já mata o dash assim, já termina, né? E passa pro próximo. Olha quem veio aí. É, a gente está com camisetas... É verdade, cam... casal combinando. Casal combinando camisetas. Eu também. Isso. Eu tô tomar um banho rapidinho. Tá bom. <risos> bom banho. Obrigada. Não sei por que eu tô avisando. Não, o chat tem essa informação agora. Limpar o quarto ouvindo o dash. Pô, uma faxina boa aí, hein? Ficou bonita mesmo, né? Isso, eu gosto. Gosto dessa... Dessas cores. Vou lá depois eu terminar a live, isso. Inscrever o Rafa pro BBB, imagina. Alguém aí do chat participaria do BBB? Essa é a questão que eu quero saber. Ele ia conseguir explicar, é verdade. Ele ia conseguir explicar o que é calabreso. Qual Rodrigues participaria? Vitor Bass participaria. Diego participaria. Achou ousado. 